Hey guys, brand new podcast, Tops Off World Tour, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Edmonton, Calgary, Kelowna, Bismarck, Sioux Falls, Oshkosh, Peoria, Rockford, Augusta, Tupelo, Boozer City, Jonesburg, Jonesburg, Jonesboro, Charleston, Lexington, Detroit, Cleveland. I am almost done with the Tops Off World Tour. Oh, and not really. I'm going to Australia, the, but, and then we're, well, actually New Zealand, we're going to Auckland in uh, April 17th, then Taro on the 19th, Melbourne, Torrensville, uh, Perth, South Brisbane, Sydney on the 29th. And my movie, The Machine, premieres in theaters, only in theaters, Memorial Day weekend. The trailer is out. I hope you enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, please share it. There will be a QR code. If you see that QR code, you can pre-buy your tickets for the opening week. Get that Thursday ticket. We're doing something special in theaters uh, that will be live streaming, that will be fun, that will be awesome. I should not have said that out loud because I don't think we've announced it, but it doesn't fucking matter. No one at Sony or Legendary listens to my podcast. So just fucking get that QR code. Pre-buy your tickets. Let's, 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 let's have a good weekend. Memorial Day weekend, baby. The Machine. Doug Stanhope is in Australia right now. Sydney, Perth, South Brisbane, Adelaide, and Melbourne. Don't say it like that. That's the way they say it. That's like if you're going to Ibiza. I don't say Ibiza. I don't say South Carolina. It's 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 the craziest thing. I, I promised myself I wasn't going to do long-winded intros. Find Doug Stanhope in Australia. Tell him I said hi. Buy him a beer or a vodka. Today's podcast uh, is fantastic. I have him. Dave Smith. I don't know if you've heard him on Joe Rogan's podcast, but he is fucking awesome. He is a great hang, a fantastic comedian. He is on Legion of Skanks. Uh, and Doug Stanhope, one of the best key comedians to ever have done it. It's my honor and pleasure to have them in the new podcast studio. Doug Stanhope, Dave Smith. I, uh, by the way, I, I don't know, because I, I saw it and I fucking melted down. And I was like, kind of like I, the woman in the bathtub in the video for Black Hole Sun. Yeah. Remember, she literally <laughs> melted in the bathtub. <laughs> I thought it was this big. And Leanne's like, it's an inch big. It's not that big, but it's still fucking. Why would you put it right there? It just doesn't make any sense. I, I have no tattoos and I could, or tattoos. Tattoos, yeah. It. But I also, I always I felt it. that it was almost just out of like commitment issues. Don't worry about it. Have you started? And to you decide you want just so everyone knows we're recording right now, but keep going. Yeah, I to make the decision. I'm like, I always be like, but then what if one day I'm like, I don't want that anymore. And now I gotta go through. Well, so uh, this, can I tell you that my my hardest part about it was I go, I don't want to overreact. I don't want yeah. her to regret it. I, it's a, it's there forever. It's got right. it forever. Right. I don't want right. you to regret right. it. You coming in? You can smoke in here, by the way, Doug. If you want to, I'm not Rogan. By the way, who fucking smokes now? Smoke cigarettes? Yeah, no, and vapes, no, and vapes. That yeah, I was and really vapes. surprised. I might smoke a cigar. You want to top me off, Brian? That last yeah. chunk of ice. And then Doug's I'm, Doug's touring. Oh, hang on, I know Doug's Doug's business model is so brilliant. I remember. I remember he had. I, no, no, Doug. I remember we did a show together, and Carrie was with us, and Carrie was like our our bartender for the night, and she was making sure we didn't get too fucked up so we could get through the show. So she was making us drinks, but she was making them light for the early drinks. And then they get a little, she was making them light. So we didn't stutter on stage. Right. Right. So you're at least, you're... Did you bring your own vodka? He said to me, he goes, what does Doug drink? I said, vodka, but he likes the cheap shit. Doug, can I tell you what your, can I tell you what your next million dollar idea is? Uh, I have it. I have it. Go ahead. Oh, I want to hear yours. It's yeah. It involves you. Ooh, I like this already. You give me a million dollars. You're past me. <laughs> that's my that's my million dollar idea. That's a very solid <laughs> It heavily involves you. you. Pass me my cigars, would you? In the in the thing that says the machine. Yeah. Um I think you should do. So I almost did this. It was a two hundred fifty thousand dollar investment for a it was like five crates of they were, you know, you, remember, you ever see like vitamin C packets when you rip them up and uh -huh. pour them in water? It was that, but with vodka. Vodka powder? Va no, just, vodka pouches. Just vodka pouches. Pouches, so you could throw them in your jacket pocket. Oh, no, oh, they here. have those. Oh, here, no, do just they? give me all the scars. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, they they yeah no, the, but you should do your own because it's so your, it's so my brand too, <laughs> is I, I, I do not like to be told when I can drink or when I can't drink. So like, I like to have a little baby bottles of vodka with me. Like in my backpack, they're always in my backpack. Like if we go to a if we go to an event with a bunch of dads, I go, 
I don't know if I want to drink, I want to have a drink, you know? Like, I don't, I don't want to, like, but those little pouches are the fucking best. Yeah, but you have to take so many of them. Yeah, well. What I figured out, I'll tell you my million uh, dollar idea next, but, uh, you know, I always carry that because you can carry on. You can have 10 yeah. you know, in a quart size bag. You're la- they'll let you through with those? Yeah, because oh. you're liquids. Who fucking because carries shampoo? Small. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, by the way, I got, I got into, I've gotten into arguments in TSA abroad because they don't, they don't really, they don't really get it, and so like, and because I guess no one, they're so strict with fluids, no one travels with any fucking fluids at all. So when you bring like fucking ten little baby bottles of Jack Daniels, they're like, what the fuck is this? But keep going. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Now, now I'm thinking Australia. Uh, you just went right. I just got back from Europe ye- yesterday. Okay. Are you going on? Oh, no, no, no. A couple of days. Yeah. I'm going to Australia in April. When are you there? Uh, I leave Sunday. <laughs> For real? Yeah. Where are you playing? Uh, uh, all over. Uh, do you do? I do uh, Brisbane, uh, Perth, Sydney, Melbourne, Canberra, and Adelaide. Nice. And I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. February 18th through March 4th. So what were you yeah. your million dollar oh, well, uh, First of all, the, the what I figured out is... If you have two bags, you can put the twice as much mini bottles in separate bags because yes. they're only looking at the bag. They don't know who the bag belongs to. They don't know right. that's the same person yes. bringing two. And you're allowed two bags and they're because e- they're each like one quart size bags and they give yeah. them to you right when you go through. But you can. It's a great fucking workaround. Yeah. And as like anyway, the million dollar idea. We start a podcast. This is why I, uh, I I was high and I thought this up. It's ridiculous, by the I way. I love this. Uh, but I, when I thought of it, I go, I got to fucking pitch this to Kreischer because this is what you do. <laughs> you start a podcast called I Dare You to Tweet It. Celebrity guests, they, however the structure of the game show, if yeah. you lose, you have to tweet whatever, something horrible, and leave it up for 24 hours before you can say that it's part of a prank show. That's the A game. So you get that rolling. Now what happens anytime a celebrity gets drunk and tweets or social media, any career ending kind of fucked up shit, rather than say, oh, I was hacked, which doesn't wash. We fly out to you like Ray Donovan, put you on our podcast as though it's already been done. Have you tweeting that going, I can't believe you're making me do this. Charge them hundreds of thousands of dollars to save their career. That would have, Roseanne Barr would be sitting there right today. So it's a PR, it's like an after the fact PR you like, know, cover the up. The public them. only knows the game show, but yeah. we on the back end. We're like, we're like Mr. People's... Fox. We're, we're the fixer. We come in. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. We're going to be in and out of here fast. Yeah. You see what their net worth is? And you- Mr. K. Tarantino, what did you tweet? Okay. The Jews did sue some of that, but, but we want to make sure that, okay, we got this. We got For this. the record, I think you made some solid points, but it's yeah. not going to play well with the public. Can I tell you my million dollar pitch idea? Yeah. It's based on Roseanne also <laughs> is, uh, is uh, Penance. It's a show called Penance. Okay. All right. So it's a game show and they bring up celebrities that have fucked up. So it'll be Roseanne Barr. Bill Cosby, and that's a pretty big jump in levels of fucked up. I'm trying to think. Jokes. Okay, let, let's see. Yeah, is there a middle? Is there like someone in the middle of? All right, let's do Roseanne Barr. Let's do Roseanne Barr. Let's do Roseanne Barr. Let's do Roseanne Barr. That's a bad one. That was a bad one. I guess he went. Thank you. Send those people to jail. Send those people to jail. She goes. There's Roseanne Dahmer, uh, <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> you take Roseanne Barr, and you, and the audience and the judges. Decide what her penance is, and then she decides to accept it or t- or not take it. So they go, Roseanne, you tweeted that that lady looked like a a monkey. Is that what she said? Planet of the, Planet of the Apes. You tweeted her. She's Which, a- did you see the picture of her? <laughs> I'm just, just saying, I don't I don't have that much to lose, but I'm just saying, like, there's no, I had no, I don't even know who the lady is. Oh, dude, I'll is you, the does she not? Does she? It's a solid reference. It was more a haircut comment than it wasn't really like features of her face. Really? It was like she had the haircut. Also, pick up a picture of her. Of her. Wait, don't, don't. I don't want to react to it. Because I'm going to be like, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're probably. So, so she, so then they go, Roseanne, the audience has decided, and the people at home who are watching live have decided you need a six inch scar on your face 
<laughs> for your penance. Are you willing to accept your penance? And then you're forgiven. You can go back to your show. She goes, I'll accept that penance. And then we watched them take a knife to her face and they scar it. And then she, and during the scarring, she apologized. I'm so fucking sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. Like, ow, I oh, hurt so bad. And then they stitch her up. No anesthetic, just stitch her up. <laughs> and then that's her penance. And then she's forgiven for the thing she did. <laughs> so, so you're torturing people on this show? Yeah, well, well that's what they want. That is hold true. On. That's what they want. You know, yeah, no, but you have to on, get the general on. public to decide that no. they're also going to no. forgive her. Because that's like if she is... got the scar and then people still didn't forgive her. Yeah. I sat, I sat, I, I was high in a tour bus with Shane Gillis watching Apocalypto. Shane Gillis. I was watching his eyes and I realized he was the guy that, he was the guy that got up to the top of the thing and then the eclipse happened. Like he was the guy. And I go, they've always been doing this. We're still doing this. Human sacrifices. People want to see it. They want to see a human sacrifice. We're sitting there and I'm high. Granted, and I go. Yeah, I've never seen that movie. So Apocalypto. Lost. Oh, and by the way, I just took an edible right before you walked in. So in I love that you've, I love that you've, you've brought in, <laughs> you've, you've welcomed edibles into your life. Yeah. In about 40 minutes, I'm going to realize, oh, fuck, that's why I took an edible. Oh. Every time I forget <laughs> that I took it. And then about 45 minutes, I'm like. Oh, oh yeah. We got into edibles over Christmas, me and my family. And I would. Me and my family. I love that. I just heard your podcast where you're talking about your fucking kids stealing your fucking oh. blunts or splits. Those or blunts. Whatever those blunts. Called. By the way, Louis J. Joe, J. Gomez spoke two of them last night with Big J. Yep. Those blunts are aggressive. They're from El Blunto and they've been dipped in keef and hash. And they're fucking yeah. next level. Yeah, he was pretty fucked up. He was telling me when we he left after uh, something's burning, he left and he's like, why am I so drunk? And I was like, because you've been chugging whiskey since 2 p.m. I've been with you the whole time. There's an easy answer for this. Who's this? Louis, Louis J. Gomez. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, a, a I don't know what we were just talking about. Apocalypse is a great fucking movie. Shane, so Shane is the guy... Who they? I don't re even remember the movie. Shane, Shane did fucking. Shane's doing like legit theaters right now. <clears throat> yeah, Shane. The uh, J I I tweeted something about this at the time. I'm really glad it turned out I'm right because I love Shane. Uh, mm -hmm. But I was like, this is gonna be a loss for Saturday Night Live and a win for Shane. Win and I think comedy. that completely turned out to be right. Like he really that would his what he's doing now is so much cooler than fucking being handcuffed by Saturday Night Live and just working those crazy hours and shit. Yeah. He just, he's got a ton of fans now. He's killing it. He's yeah, it's doing not even really tours. good money, I guess, yeah. Saturday Night Oh, Live. they make you sign a bullshit. Um, look, I don't, I'm, I'm, be, I'm be, I just, I don't want to upset you don't anyone. You ruin your chances of getting on? I told him, I told him, I'd, I'd walk away from my tour and do Saturday Night Live for a season. I'd do it in a heartbeat just to do Would it. Would you? Yeah, fuck oh. yeah, why, why not? It's horrible. What no. you're doing is so much it's cooler than that. Yeah, but I would show. do it just to experience it. It's Saturday Night Live. Sure, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so- But it's not really. You, you sign like a $1,500 a week contract. Legit. Like a PA yeah, contract. Yeah, shit money. You sign it before you audition. And then you- Oh, fuck. Yeah, so you can't negotiate. <laughs> so before you sign, and then and then they- And it, it's like a six-year contract. So you you got to stay there for 10 to get make any money. Not if you start coughing out some anti-Asian slurs. That's, a, it's, <laughs> that's like getting out of jury yeah. duty of Saturday Night yeah. Live. Yeah, you, you don't need a lawyer. I don't even know if I contract. ever heard. I don't even know if I ever heard what he did, to be honest with you. Uh, was, yeah, I, I, he was doing a character. Yeah, he was just he was just being Shane. I remember in one of the articles, like one of the, the outrage articles, and even reading in there, whatever it was, like Huffington Post or some shit like that, and even reading it, just like in writing, and he said, Shane, because Shane also referred to someone as, quote, gayer than ISIS. Uh, and even uh, as they uh, said that, Judd Apatow, so, Judd Apatow, Judd Apatow, Judd Apatow, it was the Apatow fucking funniest thing I've ever done. Isaac, that's such a funny thing it's to say. It's the funniest fucking like, thing. <laughs> whoever wrote this article, you laughed when you wrote that out and quoted it. <laughs> <laughs> to call someone gayer than ISIS yeah. is so great. It's it it, it 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 the only I, I would argue that the bigger thing than the I don't the Asian thing was yeah, him drugging a, uh, Big J. That was way after. That was but that, that was, was way such after. A bigger fucking thing in my Shane history what, story. You bet. You never heard this story. Well, you've had a personal experience with the uh, yeah. the matter. <laughs> yeah, I've but had a personal experience. Yeah, Jay wasn't very happy about it either. No one's happy when you get fucking acid. Dosed. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's fucked up. Well, you know the oh, story hold on, hold on, with, hold on. with Bert. 
right? Hennigan no? wouldn't come to the fucking desert parties uh, for a while, or he wouldn't hang out or drink anything. He was so afraid that we were going to dose him. And you go, we, no, we have boundaries. You don't. Uh, boundaries is an interesting word. We talked about this a little bit One of bit our good friends night. doesn't have boundaries. Yeah, Ari. <laughs> well, you know I got dosed by Ari, right? No. Oh, well, so whatever. Ari comes over to my house. I mean, I like, I, like, it's like, you could, whatever. Ari comes over to my house to do a podcast. It's a beautiful fucking night. I'm getting on a plane that night to go start my tour. I'm in a great mood. I get to hang out with Ari for like fucking three hours in those back outdoor couches that we used to have at that old house. Yeah. Which is where I thought I was going. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, yeah. I, that was one of the best nights. Of my when I walked life. in, I said, oh, I wish my house looked like this, meaning being fixed under yeah. construction. <laughs> it's still fucking sitting there dormant <laughs> since before Thanksgiving, that fucking house. It's still done dog shit. Go ahead with I'll get into that later. Tell me about so, dosing. Big J. So Ari, Ari comes over to my house. He says, hey, we should do a shot before this podcast. And I was like, okay. Now I don't think anything about it, of it. And so I do a shot with him and it tasted off. I remember that. And I was like, that's odd. And there was a little piece of paper in it. it was, yeah. And, it was, and, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, no, drink all of it. Drink all of it. <laughs> and so we drink it. And then we sit down and we do a podcast. You're always like, in hindsight, you're like, there were clues. <laughs> there were. I should have. Hardcore clues. He, I walked in on him. <laughs> dosing me i walked Don't in on him doing it blame and i was like and i was like i was like hey what are you doing he's like nothing 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 hold on hold on it was like i really did catch him dosing me but you'll ne you never think in your mind i'm walking in on my friend dosing me right now so never. you'd never go to that never like, and then we do the podcast and an hour later i'm like <sighs> i feel odd like I, I i was on ecstasy so i was bl oh. like blowing up and i was like like the, I only use that term as if it's 1997, but that's how I felt. Like I was blowing up. Like I was going, and he's like, are you on something? Maybe you're on drugs. Maybe you're on drugs. And then I find out that he's dosed me. But you're already on ecstasy. I don't know it yet. Yeah, I'm already on ecstasy. Oh, wait, he dosed you with ecstasy. He dosed me oh, with right. Molly. I thought yeah. you were saying you're on ecstasy no. anyway. Right. And so and so I I don't handle it very well. I never released a podcast. No one's ever seen the podcast. I, I didn't for a number of reasons. Do you have it still? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Do you think any day you will or no? No. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell, well, I tell you why it, it, I, I, it would be less now, but if I had, it would have, and Ari's done a lot of things to ruin his career. It is not a kind representation of Ari because he does not give a fuck. And you see his friend freaked out going, dude, I'm on, I'm on blood pressure medicine. And he goes, don't, I don't care. And I go, but what if mm -hmm. something happens? My kids are in there. And he's like, I don't care. I don't, didn't think about it. It, let's just it's happening it's happening let go wow. of it and you're like and and it's not the best representation of ari that's not why i didn't release it for one like, that's my number all, one first of all how angry can you be if you're on ecstasy <laughs> well that's the interesting part is i started having a good time is that is that, that's the weird part of that story is like but you see this really is your rape story it was, yeah, 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 like, yeah i started yeah, liking yeah. it at some point <laughs> it's uh, yeah oh my god <laughs> <laughs> go? it's like, i don't know do you remember when CeeLo green said is it, but is it even rape if they're unconscious? Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. And there, and everyone just glanced by that. They're like, but I mean, she don't remember it. So did she get raped if she didn't remember it? Like, you know, if I steal your shoes and you didn't find them. Like, anyway, so I remember the reason I didn't release it is I didn't want to be a meme. The crying Jordan thing was big at the time. And I called Whitney Cummings. Whitney Cummings goes, you are in control of your story. And that is not your story. That's something that happened to you. She was talking about rape. She was like, and that was, that was Whitney was correlating with rape. She was like, you're not going to release your rape to the world and let them choose what your story is. You choose what it is and you don't show it to anyone. And I was like, it's a good call. Also, and, I, and, the, and the truth is I love Ari. I do love Ari. I'll always love Ari. And I didn't like the way he looked in it because he really didn't give a fuck. Yeah, he really. I, I feel less bad for peeing on him at that podcast festival. Yeah, I remember when that happened. <laughs> but um, but so then, and it's interesting. What's fascinating about the story is I, I I felt that that happened to me. Like a year later, they're doing Legion of Skanks elections. Yeah, I, but also I just would say if you don't know Ari that well, I also know and love Ari. Although he was, you know, that was crazy over the line. But he loves pranking people like he's just that guy nothing makes yeah. him happier i've had like things with ari where it's like ari's been like over at my place and he'll be like uh 
uh, it'll just be like, dude, can I use your computer for a second? And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. And then I get like, uh, I'm just sitting there like watching TV and you, I get like a text from Lewis and he goes, he's like, dude, are you serious? And I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? And he goes, and Ari just went into my email and sent Lewis a text, <laughs> uh, sent him an email. And he goes, I think it's time we cut Jay out of the Legion of Skanks. <laughs> and Lewis not only bought it, but texted me like, we, are we doing this yeah. or what? Like, it's, So he's always doing there shit is, like that. Uh, the, the mischief part of him. The chaos part of him. I'm, I'm so yes. glad he's successful now and that yeah. we lost the, the broken Ari and we get yeah. the fun Ari, the guy that is a sweet guy because the, the chaos part was fucking. So they do Legion of Skanks elections. So so, so we're doing, we had a, uh, a presidential election season for who gets to be the president of Legion of Skanks. And Ari. Yeah, was, I, I won something in that. Yeah, you might. that's quite possible. I don't remember what you won, but it's quite possible. Yeah. You might have been a candidate. Uh, but me, Lewis, and Jay are running, and then Ari throws his name. So on the final episode, the election episode, we're doing like a big thing. This is during COVID. It's in 2020, so we have to do the show outside. Doug, of the stand. Doug, we're doing it on the it street. Doug, it is um, not, and as a guy that's been drugged, it is one of the most captivating pieces of content I've ever seen in my life. I signed up for the goddamn gas digital private <laughs> just so I could watch it. So Lewis. In defense of me, in, in defense yes. of me and Leanne, because Lewis and Leanne are oddly enough close. Like they're like Lewis and Leanne both are, are trauma kids and they broke the cycle. Right. They both broke the cycle. Huh. And so that's why they connected. That's interesting because they're one of those. If you know them, you're like it on the surface. It doesn't make sense that they'd get along. Yeah. But then it does make sense. Oh, Leanne like, loves the them. And, Leanne, them. and they, they, they talk about parenting and immediately they both had so many just. And obviously Lewis's trauma is way worse than Leanne's. But like. They're trauma kids who broke the cycle and became great parents. Yeah. But so Lewis, Lewis is, we're doing the podcast and Lewis is sitting next to me and he's just like, he's giggling to himself like a little bit too much. And it's not like at anything that's going on in yeah. the show. And I could kind of tell. And at one point he leans over to me and he goes, I dosed Ari. Like to, to be ultimate, like now it's not cool to dose anyone, but in a weird way, it's kind of cool to dose Ari he, because well, and, and, he dosed and, someone and else. Lewis so like, said, Lewis was going to go to the uh, game show of uh, Penance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Penance is a great game show, by the way. So eye for an eye, I believe they say. Right. So a revenge dosing yes. is kind of okay. And he had, and Lewis had said to me, almost like uh, ecstasy or acid. Acid. Yeah. Uh, Lewis had said to me, Don't worry, I got you. He said this privately to me, I got you. I'm gonna dose Ari. And I was like, that's not what I'm looking for. And he's like, <laughs> that in no worry. way, yeah, that yeah. in no way makes it better. Don't but worry. It, Dude. That kid, that dude raped your sister. I'm raping his sister. And you're like, like, that's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> like a, that in no way helps. But in Lewis's mind, he's like, no, this yeah, makes yeah, it right. Lewis this makes mind. it right for you. Yeah. And so, so, so I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm like, the I'm most like, oh, that's fucked up, but baiting bit of content I've ever seen in my life. And so he goes, he goes, yeah, I dosed Ari and I'm looking over at Ari and you can see. Wait, so hitting hang him. on. This, this, so they, he says this live on the podcast. No, no, no. no he no, no, whispers no. this to me. So All like right. I'm sitting next to close. So to the content right part here. is coming up. So that, yeah, yeah. So he, I'm sitting yes. here to where he is, you know, like he leans in and like yeah. tells me and I'm like, Oh dude, no fucking way. This is brutal. And I look over at Ari and like, while we're all talking on the podcast, Ari's just starting to like do this shit and like look off. And I'm like, Oh dude, this is a, and then, and so it's, can, it's hard to not watching, laugh. You're watching Ari go like, yeah, he's, ju he's just <laughs> and then, doing and then the Lewis shit. is like, uh, uh, Lewis and, he's punching Dave. and then like, I'm like, oh shit, I can't believe this. And then I guess finally, man, okay. So you know that this is happening when you're watching it, but no one else does. No, no hang on, I don't no even one, think, you know, no, hang on, hang on. So to be fair, as the outsider, I already know the whole story. So you knew you, yes, okay, you know everything. The whole yeah. story is and this is, uh, the whole story is, well, they, well, it comes out like on the show. So eventually <laughs> Lewis lets him know like on the podcast. Yeah. 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 And he's like, he's like, Aha, uh -huh, we fucking dosed Ari, blah, blah, blah. And then Ari, uh, he's like, Whoa, what do you mean you dosed me? He's like, really? Did you dose me? By the way, <laughs> or do I know exactly what I'm doing right now? I passed my drink over to Big J. <laughs> and and then, Doug, Doug, oh, you no. scroll back 20 minutes. He was minutes, just acting the whole you time. Watch, <laughs> and you watch Shane Gillis lean over to Ari and go, Lewis is dosing you. And Ari goes, okay. And everyone laughs and everyone laughs and je and you watch Ari go switch. So Lewis told Shane that he, before he told me, he told Shane that he had just dosed Ari. Ari went and ratted him out and told, uh, or Shane went and ratted him out and told Ari. 
Ari then switched the drinks over uh, to Jay, uh, then acted like he was on acid for 15 minutes. So now, we were all and, like, this is amazing. And the moment, the moment where your heart breaks is Big Jay goes, what did I do? Because Ari goes, I switched drinks with Big Jay. And Big Jay goes, uh, huh? Huh? I'm on acid? Yeah. <laughs> I've never done acid. Wait, why did I get put in this? And then, what did I do to everybody? And he has the same thing you had where you start having these flat, like these things, and he goes, there was something floating in my beer. Yeah. I noticed a little thing floating in my beer before I, called, I started chugging this I, beer down. I called, I was doing a, a game show for TBS at the time, and I called Jay immediately. And I, immediately when it happened, I go, I know exactly how you feel. He goes, it's the fucking craziest thing. He goes, why me? Because that's what you think. You go, why me? He goes, dude, your ultimate thing is, do they think I'm weak? Like, do they think I, I'm not cool? Like, you can take me advantage of me? I go, Jay. I, I, I was like, I was, I was, I've been there. This sucks. Know that this goes away. Know that it doesn't define you. Know that it's not the way people will see you for the rest of your life. Some weak fucking cuck that they can put people <coughs> in things and people in their in their drinks. And I go, know that it's also it, what I saw, Jay, you, you're the most entertaining. And Leanne today in the fucking, in bed, we were talking about Lewis. We're talking about you guys. She's like, she's like, why Dave Smith? Like, what's your interest in Dave Smith? I started talking about you. She goes, but why Lewis? And so I talked to her talking about Lewis. And Leanne says in bed, is there a human being who doesn't love Big Jay Orks? And I said, not one. Yeah, besides his girlfriend and daughter, I can't yeah. think of anyone. <laughs> I can't think of anyone outside of that. I need another drink. I need another drink. Is there someone in here making drinks? No, Big J is a genuinely yeah. great human being. He's the greatest. So that was, but it was, it, it, here was the weirdness of the situation is that it was fucked up, but it was almost like it was kind of like your situation was just fucked up. But this was like, oh, we're getting Ari back. But then you almost could om only half blame him. For once he found out his drink had been yeah. drugged, he just passed along the drug. Like yeah, he but he didn't it. pass it on to the person that dosed it. That's a good point. Jay. That is a good and point. By the way, he Shane Gillis, and with... look, we're doing a pro Shane Gillis podcast Wait, right so now. Wait, so Shane <laughs> dosed the drink. I'm getting, there's no, 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 no. Lewis like, dosed it. It's like Game of Thrones. There's too many fucking yeah. characters and I'm. No, they're sisters. They're brothers. No, they're cousins, but they still fuck. <laughs> no, they, uh, Shane found out about it, told Ari. Ari passed it to Big J. Shane, Shane saw felt, that he Shane did it. saw it and felt guilty. And Shane drank it too. Well, he, he drank it like after Jay. He goes, found he goes, out. I can't do it because he loves Jay. Jay was yeah, like, I so you're going to say he loves acid. He loves. <laughs> acid. I, I wanted Wait, to go see a whole. How did but, you know? Uh, how did you know Shane? Uh, I got in touch with him right after that thing. Uh, uh, I think I just sent him a tweet, and I was happened to be playing Harrisburg, where he's from. So he was beaten feet from New York to get away from it, going home. And he did a set and we did a podcast. It's going to sound creepy, but like you have a good eye for talent that I wouldn't normally like. You're the reason I know Sam Talent. Oh, yeah. And Sam Talent is. I mean. I, I, th I think he's fucking amazing. I think he's really fucking amazing. But you're but. I, I I like and same with Shane, same with Brendan Walsh, same with fucking Sean Rouse. Oh yeah, you're, you're you're God. I just did Bill Burr's podcast, and I'm glad I hadn't done the edible because he looks so much like Sean Rouse. They have so many yeah. similar features in their face. He, yeah. If like, I was if I was high, I'd just be staring at him, going, <laughs> "You look like Sean Rouse." <laughs> go, what? Oh, he does. Yeah, no, he does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have you seen the video when we had Junior Stopka, who does a great- Junior Stopka, he, fucking he, he brilliant. He does a brilliant Bill Burr. So they're doing this show, and I got him to uh, put Sean Rouse on his lap as a puppet. And Sean Rouse painted the lines, and Sean Rouse would just move his mouth as the Bill Burr puppet while Junior Stopka did the- uh, Yeah, it's on YouTube. How long's Sean been dead for now? Uh, 2016. Oh, I thought you were gonna say 20 years. I was like, that's impossible. <laughs> Did you know Sean Rouse? Uh, I, I, you know, I don't remember. The, I, don't, that, I mean, the I was, I was looking at a picture of him, but like, yeah, I think I did. The, I think uh, I did. If, correct if me if I'm just, right. If you, if you Google Sean Rouse, S E A N R O U S E, yeah, his tsunami bit. I mean, he had a few, but that one was fortunately taped. Uh, and it's one of the most brilliant bits. Yeah, I I know him. I don't know that I I'm not sure if he was 
a brilliant comic and a great hang for like four beers. And then after and then four he'd beers, start biting people. He would start biting people. And he used to have a better tolerance, but he had rheumatoid arthritis so bad. If you can see like one picture where his uh, just gimped up, he would wake up shrieking. Uh, yeah, that one with the split in his head. Like, look at his hands are just claws. He had rheumatoid arthritis. There was and the no amount way. of meds he was on yeah. started to destroy his liver to the point where two drinks and he's fucking out of his mind. Is he and a- completely reckless. Didn't care. Uh, yeah. But was he, was he, this is going to sound crazy, but was there an alternative for him? Like, was there, an, there, there was no way. Not that, drinking. Oh, oh, is that it? Yeah, no, he was a fucking reckless alcoholic. Oh, I don't remember. Like, just, yeah, once he- I just remember he did whatever, fucking Whatever hammered. the amount of drinks, then he's gone. I mean, I, uh, Chaley, he was, we were playing San Diego, and we're in this room where I uh, you know, ordered pizza, and he goes full tilt, and he passes out, and then he wakes up and starts to piss on the air conditioner, and Chaley's like- <laughs> Grabs a pizza box and puts it in front of him as he's trying to guide him towards the bathroom while, and he's just not there. Yeah, just, collecting oh. piss in a collecting, pizza box is a tough, that's a tough game. Tough that's game, yeah. It's, it's a lose lose yeah. situation. Yeah, I think he finally just got him out the door and he, because he, he couldn't get him into the bathroom. So he just ended up pissing he's, outside he's got a the kid, room. Right? Yeah. yeah kid or ex wife. Yeah. Black chick. Yep. That was that was this. And then the hence the double double on Bill Burr. Yeah, he used to have that uh, that bit. I I don't use the N word because uh, uh, I don't try to be edgy. And also, uh, my wife is black, and she promised me I had to promise her I would never use that word unless we're making love. <laughs> <laughs> I went to his house with Bob Biggerstaff. His apartment in Hollywood. All right, yeah. I hung out with him. I look, man. There was those guys. The Unbookables were like the best fucking comics. They were the A fucking best. Them. They were. They, you know what they were? And I, 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 I don't mean this in an age wise, but like they were Legion of Skanks dudes, right? But without the the marketing, like you guys have great mark. Like you have a great brand and and like and like. Well, you they fans? all didn't. Uh, you all live in the same place too. Yeah, they all lived everywhere. <laughs> These were all like who were they? Who were the out. unbookables? Well, like Brendan Walsh was not unbookable, but Brendan Walsh, one. Brendan Walsh, Brendan Walsh. Do you know Brendan Walsh? Yeah, yeah. Brendan Walsh Fucking is to brilliant. this day, to this day, the f- funniest human, just a human. His prank calls. You turn me on to his prank calls. Yeah, they're the best prank calls. I ever. love. I love a good prank call. Hold I on. Heard Do you his. know his prank calls? No, I don't. His prank calls. His prank calls are. Next level, he did a prank call. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck this up. You'll probably do it better than I would. All right. He called a sex, uh, phone, phone sex, phone yeah. sex, and he was like, "Hey, what are you wearing?" And she was like, "Oh, I'm wearing a little panties and a little bra. What are you wearing?" And he's like, "Ah, oh, just wearing." And you hear a dog barking. Hur, hur, hur. She's like, "Is that your dog?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah. Ignore him. No, what, what, uh, take your panties off." She's like, "I'm taking my panties off." And then you hear. She goes, is that a baby crying? He's like, yeah, but just ignore him, ignore him, ignore him. Take your pants off, take your bra off. She goes, I'm taking my pants, I'm taking my bra off. And then you hear, hey, what are you doing in that room? And she's like, is that your wife? He's like, ignore her, please ignore her. <laughs> she's like, yeah, but it seems, and the baby's crying, the dog's barking, the wife's yelling, and he's like, she's like, it seems like there's a lot going on. Ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. Are you going to touch yourself? She was like, I'm going to touch myself. And then you hear, Alu alu oh, oh, and it's a marching band singing. <laughs> she goes, "Is that a marching band?" And he's like, "Ignore him, ignore him." Brandon Walsh is the funniest fucking guy. I've had him open for me doing that live, which is hit or miss because which is like, hit or miss. Like yeah, he tries to pre-plan, like, "All right, this is a pizza place prank. I got to make sure that they're going to be open at our show time because right. it's out of state." And sometimes they don't answer and sometimes they just hang up. But I mean, he's funny enough in between, but he's running his board and his you know, a voice modulator and all his shit while he's wearing the neck brace and the B-man glasses. <laughs> oh, my God. This podcast is sponsored by Black Buffalo. I was just talking about Black Buffalo the other day. I'm watching this dude 
chew tobacco and I said, hey man, have you ever tried black buffalo? It's everything you love, nothing you don't. The ritual, the taste, the feel, just everything without the actual tobacco leaf or stem. Black buffalo is actually made from a variety of cabbage leaves, different leaf, same ritual. No matter whether you call it dip or chew, black buffalo makes all the flavors you know and love, like wintergreen, mint, straight, peach, even blood orange, with and without pharmaceutical-grade nicotine. God, that's what I love about it. You can buy black buffalo online at blackbuffalo.com or at thousands of retail locations across the country by checking the store locator on their website, if you're like me and you're from Florida and <laughs> and you probably chew, dip, or use po- any of the stuff, you can check them out at the, the Pilot or the Racetrack stores. I have always been a big tobacco guy. I love it. I, I chew, dip, I, I, cigars. I, I love a dip, though. The conversation for me seems to flow, and I love the smell. I love the ritual. I love having the can in my car. I love it as a treat and a little extra something. So if you're 21 or over, and you use products like this, it's time to join the Black Buffalo herd. Head to blackbuffalo.com and use the promo code BERT at checkout for 15% off your first order. That's the best uh, offer you're going to find, but you have to use my code BERT for 15% off your first order. One last time, that's the promo code BERT for 15% off your order warning. This product does contain nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. This podcast is sponsored by Groove Life. It's 2023. Are you still using the same stupid wallet from 2003? Now it's time to update your wallet game. Groove Wallet is the sleek, low-profile wallet engineered for everyday use. One simple thumb motion, and it perfectly fans out up to six cards for easy access to find everything you need. And with its durable, high-quality aluminum outer shell, this wallet is unlike any wallet I've seen. Whatever happens to your Groove Life gear, they are here to help with Groove Life 90. Oh my God, 94 year, oh, no BS warranty. That is unheard of. 94 year, no BS warranty. The Groove Wallet is the last wallet you will ever need. And they can probably bury it with you and they'll find it in 140 years because it's awesome. If you're the kind of guy who likes to carry a ton in his wallet and needs a little more space, they've got a detachable money clip or a premium leather card holder that maintains the sleek look Groove Life has become famous for. But it gives you the room you need. Uh, I love my Groove Life wallet. Liam bought me a stupid wallet for my birthday, and I hated it. I hated it, but I didn't have the, <laughs> I didn't have the balls to get rid of it because she kept going because I always lose my wallet. <laughs> She'd be like, oh, here's your wallet. And I was like, yeah, that thing. Dude, I got a Groove Life wallet. It is so sleek in my pocket. I don't have back problems when I sit on it. It's time to bring your wallet to the 21st century. Head to GrooveLife.com slash Burt and use the promo code Burt for 20% off all Groove Life products. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my code BERT for 20% off your order one last time. That's promo code BERT for 20% off your order. Last Unlimited. Did you ever do that club? Sacramento? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did Ecstasy there alone. I did. I, I, it's an old bit I had about I fucking a melon, which I didn't really do, but I all I did was fucking jack off in any possible way because yeah. I was as a middle act in a fucking empty comedy condo. Do you know what would be fun? You know be fun? I would like to take a Doug Stanhope old joke book and then take all those premises that he never did on a special, all the throwaway premises. No, no, I, I, I already have this idea. I was going to start doing it on my podcast, what? but when I ever have a fucking home again, uh, <sighs> is just do... Uh, where you take a bit from, and no one uses notebooks anymore, but I always have, and I still have probably 30 from my career. Find one of those fragments, because your notebook is like thrift store shopping. There's everything is a piece of shit till you find a gem. Yeah. So find a bit that actually turned into a fucking closer major bit of Mm -hmm. yours, and then read the notes around it that you wrote before and after that suck make no sense <laughs> the to, worst direction to take this in ever that well like, no no like uh, okay here's a, a, a joke about you know football or here's a joke but just the shit that you write i don't know how you guys write but it's mostly you know it's just the phrase that pays kind yeah, of thing and then yeah. you go oh, okay the next one turned out to be my closing bit from this 
but the one after it and before it are just utter dog shit. Yeah. Just yeah. read the ones just to show people how you know, how I, much fucking refuse is in your head. I'll say this. I lost a joke book. Yeah. One. I fucking still swear that that um, was the best I shit. lost a joke book, but here's a question. A lot of really horrible shit written in that. Can I get canceled for it? Like, can I, if if it comes out, and then and I know, I know, I know the jokes I was trying to write at the time, so I know what's in that joke book. Not great. What, did you, you never have should a, have admitted that? found return to you in it? Would they know it's yours? Yeah, that's not what I'm looking for, though, now. Because my name's in it. It's like, how Bert old? Christ, a uh, very recent. But anyone oh, could have just said, <coughs> they, see, now they've this, got this, a strong this, case. This, this, like, if they listen to this podcast, they'd be like, this is Bert's book. And you could be like, that's not my book at no, all. No, no, no. They'll be like, here's on. Here's on. Yeah, but that's just anyone. Can I'm write starting your name. a podcast. Oh, yeah, right. So, yeah. hey, we're going to steal <laughs> oh, yeah, your right. notebook. Oh, wait. Except oh, you admitted it on the podcast. You're totally right. I've been sweating this for forever. By the way, I've lost three joke books. And then I found two of them. One of them was on Leanne's bedside. I go, she goes, I didn't know what it was. I said, open it. Spank rag. Yeah. Fucking. <laughs> she reads your jokes. But like, could you get canceled for a joke? I mean, because I write. When I free write, I free write. I don't, I'm not editing myself. But no one understands that premise of not editing yourself. If you got canceled for a joke book that like you never even told the joke, you would at least go out as like a pioneer in cancel culture. Like the first one yeah. ever brought down. For First a joke all, he never even uttered. That joke, I know you say you lost it, but the truth is, as your attorney, that was stolen in a, a B and E uh, <laughs> when you were doing the move. Uh, yeah. So whoever has that is uh, has stolen property. And uh, you sound like the the lawyer for the Amistad. Yeah, I watched Amistad the other night. Do you know they don't uh, have subtitles for the first half of the movie, and they're just speaking? Have like, you seen Amistad? Yeah, but it's been a long time. Yeah, they don't have, and it's. I remember "Give us us free" is all that's coming to me. Uh, I, don't, I, didn't I, mean, I know I've, I've used it recently as a reference <laughs> in a bit, and I was surprised it got laughs because uh, I, I thought yeah, probably people don't remember that. Ralphie uh, opened with it on a Ricky Smiley cruise, <laughs> all black cruise. <laughs> Shit, I ain't seen this many black people <laughs> since Amistad. That's what you told me. I said, I said, I said, I said it a lot. Too. I watched Amistad yesterday on the plane. And so, yeah, and and they booed him, and they had to fly him out of the fucking. They had to fly wow. him out. Yeah. See, I would think he, like him or Brad Williams, could get away with it because they go, "Oh, this is a giant circus clown, fat guy." So, so only, said it. The only it, you go if you. What? Which accent? Wait, wait, wait. I was gonna say. Which accent was you're, he you're using more, then? Your level of disabled <laughs> takes you above black. Josh Blue. You go. <laughs> Josh Blue, uh, man, or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I. Uh, I haven't lost a notebook since like that was probably the early two thousands that I lost a notebook and I still fucking. Can I tell you? I mean, I, I'm not worried about getting canceled. It's just uh, what fucking great joke you are, was it? You there? are, you are impervious. <laughs> How the fuck could anyone cancel you, dude? You are impervious. You can't cancel people that don't. The only people that get canceled are people who are known. Of well, hold on, hold on. And, also, also, I do believe it is. This, I believe cancellations like sharks, right? So like, if you think of the ocean and all you think about it are the sharks, then you're not going to enjoy the ocean. Then all you're like, this is terrifying. They're all over the place. And that's what I think a lot of comics do. I look at it like you got to enjoy the ocean. If you if you, the fun is the sharks. I don't know if you ever swam with sharks. I've swam with sharks a few times, and I've had sharks run up on me swimming before like uh in when i was a kid in the bahamas someone was circling us out on a reef it's the best story ever it's like <laughs> you just gotta pull your feet up every now and then and go hope they don't get me and that's yeah. i think that's the whole thing about the cancellation thing and but doug you are in chain mail in the water going bite onto my arm see if you can break through it like that's who you are but that's what but, but what's great about you is that like you're not someone. I'm, I hate to talk like this to you, but because it's 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 gloating praise I, I, that that every one of us does about you. But I don't like doing it to you. Well, I'll play the prosecutor against okay. myself. In the first of all, I don't do a show at the Comedy Cellar. I don't do the 
drop in at the store. I play to just my audience who know what's not true. Fuck. I saw you at the store do your last hour, the one that was uh, the one that you released on. Uh, what's yeah, called? when I but I'm but, not, but one not, of my favorite bits ever. Set. One of my favorite bits ever is uh, a- a- ass rape uh, Pakistani boys. <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite. It's it's. I made Leanne listen to it in bed naked after sex. I made Leanne. I said, this is that my, seems like a weird time to the, insist. Well, you no, no. Joke. He had just released it. You had just released it. We had just released, we had just had sex. He had just released it. And I, and I saw it on Instagram where I, after sex on Instagram or on it, Twitter, whatever it was. And I saw it and I went, Holy fucking shit. This is my favorite bit. I saw it in the back of the comedy store by myself crying, laughing It's my favorite bit ever. Have you seen it? No, I don't know this one. I don't want to ruin the bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain it. It's Suddenly, a very long bit. It's a very long bit. But what he does is he rationalizes. He, is it okay? The, yeah, the, the tagline at the end, is it okay to use racism to fight gang, uh, gang rape? Gang rape. <laughs> it, is, it is so well crafted that I'm, I go, hold on. I go on. What was that? Was that was that on YouTube or was that? It was on YouTube, right? That special. Yeah, yeah it's still special. Is. What's it? What yeah, is it? the dying, the la- a dying of the last breed. Dying of the last breed. I go in. It's a. I think it's the very last bit you do on that special. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it's in the middle. Might be in the middle. So I scroll. Well, I get there the, and I go. You up, have Ryan, to watch. See this. what the title, it's, track title is. It, I go. It's my favorite bit. It's my favorite bit. And by the way, my favorite bit I've ever written was because of him. My favorite bit ever, and I. Uh, oh, when I, I took you on that train trip. <laughs> <laughs> yes. By the way, my favorite bit I've ever written is because of Doug. I asked him to watch it, and he watched it. And he went, eh. "That's my favorite bit I've ever written." And he was like, eh. "And I was like." Nothing more. I was like, "Do you remember that?" I was at the no. store. I go, "Hey, will you watch this bit?" I go, "I think you're gonna really like it." He watched it. He was like, "What's the bit?" I want to do it now. All right. Well, just tell me. So, like, the so wait, so wait, so I, I don't remember you. anything. I'm like a perfect confessional. End. I watch it. With, well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I watch it with Leanne, and Leanne is like, and like halfway in, she's like, "It's." I love this bit. I love it because it starts pedestrian. His joke starts very pedestrian. Um, I love that. Indian call centers. Yeah. Yep. Indian call centers. I love it. I could, by the way, I could do this for my whole life. If there is a heaven on earth, it is me breaking down comedy bits with comics. Because yeah. I love it more than anything. Indian call centers. So pedestrian. And he takes it and he flips it. And then he flips it again. And then he flips it back to the original place. And then he gets it to a place where you, as the watch viewer, are questioning your morals and where you stand. It's the greatest fucking, it's the greatest fucking bit. Now, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip this to the bit I was telling you about. So I called Doug one night. One well, night hang on, let me yeah, finish yeah, yeah. by saying I don't do spots, like drop-in yes. spots where the people that are seeing me, when I play the comedy store, I'm playing the main room for a ticket price for me. Mm-hmm. That's, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't... I, like if you're working out in front of some fucking sorority douches with a blog yeah. at the comedy cellar, yeah, you're gonna upset. I'm not gonna upset anyone because no one but people who want to hear it are hearing it. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think I was in an audience of full of your fans. Yeah, so I feel like that. Like I've I, I've been doing comedy now for like 14 years or something like that, and that really changed. Where it like the old school ethic, which I used to uh, believe in too. It was before I, I like had anyone who was buying tickets at all for me. But like the old school ethic was like, well, no, you want to go work in front of a crowd that doesn't know you, you know, doesn't know who you are. And then, and that was kind of like the fun is like, oh, can I win them back over? Get, oh, like, if they fucking hate yeah. me. And they were beautiful too days they, too. And they, yes. I had way more fun being an unknown. We're just coming to comedy club with t- free passes well there's something beautiful about that if well, you could no, like that, start yeah. you, sometimes you'd get into the sport of that like let me try to fucking lose yeah. everybody yeah. and then see if i could just like this is and funny then I enough would blame them that they go ah for, shit that's kind of funny like uh, I, yeah but I, I'm, I would blame I'm off them that now if they if you lose you go hey you just 
spent your fucking hard earned Friday <laughs> night going to something you have no idea what it is. Like comedy's all one thing. So you make it their fault and that justifies you fucking off a show. But oh. that's but there's something like so amazing about that. Like when you could like if you like it's almost like in some ways the purest best form of comedy is if someone goes like fuck I'm pissed off at you and then you say something so funny that they have to be like <laughs> all right that's fucking good. <laughs> But yeah. I'm I'm totally off that now. And now it's like with, with the rise of the new like cancely woke shit. I'm like, I don't even because it's not even like they're like, I don't like this. They're like, I want to ruin you for what you're saying now. Yeah. And now you're like, it's almost like I don't even want to play that game anymore. Like, OK, then I don't even want to make you laugh. If you want like my life ruined over this, then I don't want to make you laugh. And I only want to do comedy for people who are coming for this. Yeah. Like that's, that's those are the only people I want to talk to, which maybe isn't the best. No, it's, attitude, well, it, but, does, it does. It does does I, i'm saying this for argument's sake but it does sound like an echo chamber which, yeah well that's the other that's the flip side to it is but that that's well, the problem you is you're for. only like you I know love, you work I to love, get to a place where yeah i, I can love just being in an echo chamber the problem is yeah. that it, i love taking my shirt off and everything in their mind <laughs> i don't want someone going what the fuck is this it's, well I say that in my act. I go, I've lost touch with the common man, but isn't that really the goal? <laughs> isn't that what we're all working yeah, for? Right. You don't want to hang around with the common man. You want to hang around with fucking cool guys. Well, the thing yeah. about it now is like, there's this other, so like to me, like I'm not fucking selling tickets like anything like you guys are, but I'm feeling like I'm doing okay at like comedy clubs for the weekend or like at independent shows that I do, like I'll fill it up. And then it's like my fans and they know what they're coming for. You yeah. know what I mean? And then like I can do that with them. And then from the podcast, I could try to grow those listeners. And then there's more people coming. Now, the the one like you're saying, it's like on the one hand, you're like, oh, OK, you're only doing it for your crowd in a way. Yeah. So you're not like kind of getting the like tough. But I feel like like wherever things are today, if you go into like some random crowd that's not expecting it, it's not like it's making you sharpen your iron. It's making you almost like in order to kill there. I'd have to start doing shit that isn't the comedy I want right. to do. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to start yeah. doing shit that like, all Everybody right, well, you, likes. yeah, you won't laugh at this if I yeah. do it the way I want to do it. So yeah. I'll do it the way you guys will like it. And then that'll kill here. But then it's like, that's not what I want to do for my crowd. So yeah, I don't, when, like, when, when you look at what is roundly popular for funny on like network TV or, or TikTok. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. TikTok, TikTok can break my heart. Because I see some really funny guys. Like, they're really funny guys. But it's like, uh, it's like uh, ma mayonnaise. It's not, mayonnaise doesn't blow your mind, but it does add to it. And I, <laughs> and I, but I see some dudes that are really fucking funny and it, and I go, I'm, I'm not that funny. Like, I, I really think that I all have the time. to piss and make go a piss. drink. You guys, bathroom right there. Bathroom right hey, there. Can, yeah. Can you cover for me? <laughs> uh, Pete will make you a drink. Pete, will you make him a drink? Oh, could I get another one of these uh, yeah, please. these IPAs if anyone's out there? Uh, right here, Doug. There's a bathroom in there. Um, so I'm going to tell you, while Doug's not here, I'm going to tell you about the best joke I've ever written because of Doug Stanhope. Okay. I'm listening. <laughs> Thank you, brother. So I called Doug. I called Doug one after, is it early evening? I will say the one of the great, uh, look, because he's not here. If you can hear that piss in these mics. That is. There's no way this microphone's not picking that up. If it's picking my voice up, it's picking that up. <laughs> Sounds like he has a big dick, right? <laughs> so they got a new bit on the show, piss streams. Just post people's piss streams. For real? Hennigan, where are you from in, in Scotland? Edinburgh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes the tracks. So thank God you're from the one place I know of. No, no, Glasgow's the only one. Other, okay, I, know, that's, yeah. I got two. I got Anything two. other than that, it's like, well, how close is it to Glasgow? Because I don't I, know. I just was in Glasgow last week, and Glasgow, Glasgow. Uh, I hate to interrupt, but I just walked out of there, and there's a picture laying down, because there's under construction, of what looks like Eddie Ift naked and wiping his ass. It's definitely not Bert. It was definitely not I just not saw it left. very briefly, and it was terrible. Is that really me? Yeah, you know what it is. What is it? Oh, yeah, 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 that's me. Oh, my God, I did look like Eddie F when I was a kid. <laughs> um, So I called Doug, and I, said, I was going to say this behind your back, but I'll say it in front of your back. There's a couple people in, like, uh, 
pretty fucked up. The there's a couple of people that I'm proud I know. You know what I mean? Like that they, they like you work hard enough that you get to know. That you get to know that and they you can call them friends. This is gonna sound silly and I don't want anyone to say anything, but like Stan Hope's definitely one of them. Rogan's definitely one of them. David Spade's one of them. Like guys that sure. you go know, like, like, I can't believe I'm friends with that guy. I mean, I looked up Stan Hope forever. I remember the first time he texted me, uh he emailed me. And uh I, I, I it, it's like obviously the fucking David Tell, one of them, without a doubt, Colin Quinn. Colin Quinn, one of them. Like, there's guys that you go, like, as a comic, I don't know if anyone listening gonna understand this, but you go, because I don't I don't know if they have this in like woodworking or like or being a contractor. <laughs> like, there's guys that do it so much better than you will ever do it that you look up to them and go, and then when you go are friends with them, it's a game changer. You're like, am I, am I you know, you don't think am I that good? You go, but how do I deserve to be able to them to talk to me like a friend? Well, because we separate personalities from work. <laughs> yeah, keep, no, keep going. A joke. Oh, oh, I was, I was we're like, better comics was, than you. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But we can oh, separate yeah. you as a personality. <laughs> I said that so caustically. I, I was literally like, kept a straight I was like, face. I don't know what that sentence means. <laughs> so I text. I called Doug one day. This is one of friends. I call him one day, and I go, "What are you doing?" I don't know if you remember this, but he goes, "I'm, uh, I'm having a vodka and grapefruit juice." having a cigarette, and I'm trying to write knock-knock jokes. Do you remember this? No, I'm trying to remember why I was trying to write knock-knock jokes. And you said to me, we're as good as those guys, right? Like, we should be able to write knock-knock jokes. Like, <laughs> we're just as good as those guys. I don't know, figure out, try to write a knock-knock joke. And I went, yeah. And you were like, guy walks into a bar, like, like a old school oh, joke. Oh, like a, yeah, yeah, like a street joke. A street joke. And, yeah, I went, yeah. and he goes, I should be able to write one of those. And I went, yeah, yeah, we should. And I was like, yeah, and we talked for a little bit, and then we hung up, and I went, and this is in April 2019. So I was like, I was like, yeah, we should be able to write one of those jokes. So April 13th, uh, I walk, Isla gets her period. Uh, for anyone that knows my act, it's a big bit. Isla, it was Isla's period party thing. It, it was, it did, uh, you know, it was a bit I did. She gets her period. She calls me and tells me, go period, go, we're going to throw a period party. So I have to go to Gelson's to get a red velvet cake to, to throw a period party. It's the so perfect I, cake for a period party. Uh, it's the only cake for a period party. Yeah. And so I start walking. I go to Starbucks and I have an interaction with a dude uh, where I walk into a Starbucks and I have an interaction with a guy behind the, behind the counter. It's a bit that I, t I told him special. And, and it's funny. And I walk out. The next day, randomly, I walk into the same Starbucks and the same kids there, and we have the same interaction, and it's there. And that is the moment where I went, guy walks into a bar. It's my favorite joke I've ever written, my ever, 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 ever been a part of. I'm so proud of this one joke because we had just talked about this, and I went, I got a guy walks into a bar. But it's a Starbucks, right? So you don't know it's guy walks into a bar. It's, it, it is guy walks into a bar. Uh, hey, why the long face? With the horse, why the long face? But it's it's in three parts and it's very because, pedestrian up front, very my, pedestrian. Because but it, it, my mother died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bingo. I, when Bingo's in the crowd, I make her come up and do one of her stupid dad jokes like that. And, but she had well, she gets she doesn't make them up, obviously. She gets them off yeah. the internet or from people. But uh, uh, I've gotten a few bingo. A horse oh. walks into the bar and says, Why the long face? And I'd never heard this. Yeah. Uh, and then the horse says, It's my dad died. <laughs> bingo texted me one time what's what's red white and blue and can't get through a revolving door you know what's, oh, what's, black, what's black, black and white black and white and red yeah and can't get through a revolving door yeah. i said what she goes a nun with a spear through her head that came from me <laughs> so i write the joke and i and i and it's the favorite joke i've ever done and my favorite joke i've ever done i'm so proud of this joke. It's so good. It's so good. It's so clean. So I tell Doug, I go, hey, man, I, I tell him all this. What I just said to him, We're at the, I'm at the OR, and I go, will you just watch this joke? And he goes, yeah. So I do the joke on stage and <laughs> come back, and Doug's like, eh. <laughs> so tell the joke. No, I can't. It's too long. Oh, it's a long? What's, what's a, yeah, yeah, it's long. I thought it's it was long. a street joke. No, it's, it's what is a street joke? 
Yeah. What was the street joke? So well, you uh, kind of set this up. That okay. We're okay. Trying to figure out. How I walked to into a Starbucks. Walked into Starbucks. You... I walked into Starbucks. A young black kid working behind the counter. Have you heard this joke? Yeah, I believe I have. I think I've young seen you do this. Yeah, the one black kid working behind ago. the counter and. Uh, Louis J. Gomez loved this joke. Yes, I, oh, I loved this joke. That's why it's a long this. bit, because you do a lot of uh, unnecessary uh, <laughs> banter in the middle of it. <laughs> you mean filling time? <laughs> yeah. I'm not yes, doing the I, joke now. I'm not doing the joke. But yeah, yeah, you've heard I, the joke. I, Louis, really J., Louis I came remember, up to me and he goes. I remember loving this. And I think you did it at the comedy store to show that we were all on that. Louis was on and, yeah. and we were like, we were and all Doug on. And Doug was there too. And Doug was the same night, I think. Maybe. Maybe this is and, all from the And same I night. fucking love this joke i i you have to do it now no for the listener the listeners have heard it they've definitely heard my material if not go check out his stand up okay hold on so this is a true story it was the best part of this it's a true story so i walk in Young black kids working behind the counter of Starbucks, and he recognizes me, and I love getting recognized. Is this the notebook that you lost? <laughs> I'm not doing this fucking joke. I'm not doing a goddamn joke. There's no way I'm doing a joke in front of Doug. There's no fucking way. You gotta. No. <laughs> it bombed in front of you the first time. I'm not doing it again. Then you're you're again. Explain it with us interrupting yeah, you. I'm not gonna constantly. fucking do it. There's no fucking way. If I was watching oh. it at the comedy store, oh. well, like Chris Rock probably walked through it. I go, oh, someone's more interesting. And I didn't even listen. Oh. <laughs> no way. I almost walked into that trap. He saw me. You're like, oh, him. If it didn't impress him in front of a fucking, like, raucous crowd, <laughs> now you're going to just tell it to us while we interrupt you constantly. Oh, that, that I, I don't is... want you to do the bit. I just want you to tell me, like, the point of it. It's not, I'm not doing that. All right. <laughs> Oh, all right. If you're not, can I tell you what? That's uh, like a thing that I had, I don't know why that your story just reminded me of this. But you guys both know Rich and Bonnie, right? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, right. So I was doing this. Is like in uh, I think Rich like Walsh, he's an older comic. He's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I think he's alive. Still. I think he's alive. Uh, he's alive. This, this is like in 2015, I think, and uh, so. I don't know, whatever. I was, you know, I was like, I was in comedy for a few years, but still like very a young comic. And I, I did this joke. It was at Stand Up New York Comedy Club, and I did this joke that was a joke I was like really happy with. Like this was like at the time, like oh, this is the best joke I have. And I did it, and I got off stage, and Rich came up to me afterward, and he was like, gave me like a great compliment in a Rich Voss way. Yeah. Like he was like, that's the best joke in New York City, and it's wasted on a nothing like you, you know, yeah, you yeah. know, but you know, like, but it was like a compliment. Like yeah. I was like, thank you, I really appreciate that. And he asked me like, uh, like a week later. To, uh, to open for him on a show. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. And so I went to the show open for Rich and he was telling me and him and Bonnie were in the green room and he goes to Bonnie, he goes, he's got the best joke in New York City and this nothing has it. No one's ever going to care about it because it's coming from his dumb face. I love that. And he goes, Bonnie, you gotta, you gotta watch, you gotta listen to this joke and it's the funniest joke. And Bonnie goes, I'll be the judge of that. And I was like, okay. And I was on stage and he he insisted that I have to do this joke, yeah. which I was going to do anyway, because it was like the best joke I had. But I was on stage and I'm doing the joke and I was, I'm just like in the middle of doing it. And I just remember like panning over the crowd and I just look over and see Bonnie McFarlane in the crowd as I'm doing it. And she goes... <laughs> Which I just thought was the funniest fucking reaction. I was ever. just gonna say for the listener because I oh yeah sorry my sure. podcast is still audio. Oh people, everyone's watching. Right? I know. Everyone's watching. I was yeah. gonna YouTube. explain what you were doing because I as though oh. this is audio I only. Need, I need another cocktail. She I, uh, gave me a. Eh. I'm, 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 uh, I'm getting pretty high. Our podcast. Our podcast. Just uh, audio now. Do you have to? What time do you have to be out? No, no. Okay. What no, time do you have to be out? I was just set, realizing yeah, that edible, eight, I think, is our show. I timed that edible perfectly. Like, that's, I go about 40 minutes. I'm going to go, oh, that's why. That's why I'm <laughs> laughing at nothing. <laughs> what, um, what, with, uh, this is a, uh, uh, this is a, uh, uh, I, don't even, I say words I don't know what they mean sometimes. Yeah, that's what makes it funny. If you just sell it, we probably would have just assumed it was a word we this didn't know. This is an know. esoteric my question. My favorite part of Joey Coco Diaz is when he blurts oh out God. big words that are wrong. Joey <laughs> Diaz. So Joey Diaz. So, uh, I mean, look, 
so I do fully loaded, right? Every year or this year, we're doing it again this year. And I get offer, I put an offer for Joey Diaz. And I go, just so you know, we, we all ride in the bus, we're all riding bunks. It's fun. It's great. Well, it's great hang. We all party. We sleep. We sh- wake up the next venue. So Joey eats a, roughly a, like a quarter ounce of mushrooms. And I'm like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. And then he eats a bunch of edibles and gets in his fucking bunk with a fucking mask on. And we start driving. And I get woken up in the middle of the night by everyone. (laughs) Joey's not happy. (laughs) He's fucking tripping his balls in a space capsule because he's in that fucking box flying. And he's like, dog, pull it over. I'm out. Get me, drop me off on the side of the fucking road. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking... Uh, that guy, that yeah. guy, George and I. Could you ever imagine Joey Diaz being happy on a fucking tour bus? Never <laughs> in a million fucking years. I never, George and Isla had never seen him do stand up. And they, they know, they know Doug, they know Joey, they know, uh, they know everyone, but they only know them as humans and they don't know them as comics. So they never seen, they never seen Joey do stand up. So Joey goes to do stand up. <clears throat> George and Tyler are like, huh? What the fuck? It was the greatest. It was a fucking. It was great when when Rogan was getting canceled for the first or second time. Yeah, they really canceled him. Yeah, they got really got him. Georgia goes, do you believe this guy? I go, what do you mean believe this guy? You know him. She goes, you know him. I said, you know him. She goes, I know him. I said, Georgia, he's the reason we have chicken. She goes, wait, this is the guy with the chicken house. And I go, yeah. And she goes. Oh, I love that guy. I go, yeah, that's the fucking guy. <laughs> she goes, wait. His head was smaller back then. <laughs> His head was smaller back <laughs> Oh. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what do you think, esoterically, what do you think, esoterically? Don't, don't, don't throw fucking big words at me when the edible's coming on. When do you think? I really don't know what that word means, but I think do I Do you think do. your career would be different had podcasting started when you were younger? No, because I would have done exactly what I did with my podcast and just no. But you were late to the no game of podcasting. You were late to. It. I know, yeah. and I only did it because there's no, no open mic where nope. I live, and I go. Nope, 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 nope. What? No, I'm going to disagree with you because you were hardcore on the fucking blog game. Yeah, One of my I used favorite to write things a lot. In the world was your blog. Yeah, but then there, like, I you looked at a, my website, website the other anyone? day. You had a website before anyone. You had a, a Not like a daily, anyone, uh, but Dane, I, well, Dane, you and Joe. All but I wrote websites. funny yeah. shit on it. Have you ever? So I remember when when I like first started uh, comedy was you and Rogan were the ones who were like doing that shit. Yeah, like I remember the old Joe Rogan dot net was like his thing, and yeah. he'd have videos on there, and I he'd have Louis like blogs on there. Oh, was he? No, 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 no. no. I didn't know about that. If he did. website. No, but that it, was like a whole different thing. That was I, I remember when. Uh, when Rogan first started his podcast and we were all like, oh, that's going to be like a cool thing. Not that we thought it the would be like what it is or now. The Joe show, which was the video. The thing. Joe show was a reality show where he just had Brian Redband follow him yeah. around, which is no. the Carlos Mencia tape. You no, know, I remember that that tape blowing up like the video because that was on the Joe Rogan dot net site. But I remember yeah. when he started the Joe Rogan experience where I just thought like, oh, that's going to be interesting because this dude's got shit to talk about for yeah. days and days. So that'll be really he cool. Did, can, I, can I be very clear, though? He didn't at first. What have shit to talk about? He did not. Well, he probably didn't know what he was going to say. No, I just I just remember from him like calling into O and A and shit, and he'd talk yeah. about DMT and like all well, this no, crazy no, he had, shit. He had, uh, by the way, I love Joe. I love Joe. I hope if Joe hears this, he knows I'm speaking with love. But Don't like, wish like, me Joe, away to the fields. As, <laughs> as, as a real fan, and and Doug will say this, but like Joe <laughs> Joe's best trait is his curiosity. At yeah. the time. He was learning his curiosity, and he talked a lot about marijuana, a lot about DMT, and aliens. Yeah. And that was, and like, maybe some not- That's back in the day when he made me watch that four-hour double VHS tape of the fake moon landing. Yeah, yeah. His curiosity has gotten so much better. He's so much more interesting now. And And I say this as a fan than he was then. And Doug, I think Doug knows Joe way better than all of us. No, not really. I don't think anyone knows Joe any more than you know Joe. Really? Yeah. It's a, 
It's not like he has stories or anything. Like he fucking talks for three hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone, you know yeah. it all by now. Yeah, we, yeah you, there's not a lot of discussion about that guy. Yeah, we might know him better than his wife. Yeah, your 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 mid mid range <laughs> Patreon fan knows you better than I do. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a good point. Yeah, there's not. I don't know. I don't know if I I know him better now, but it's not best because I hung out with him. It's just when I listen to him. What? Like, how few hours does he have to sleep? Like, if you, other than sleep, when is he not in public? He's dude, like he's, he's accounted for everywhere he goes. He's at a gym. He's sparring. He's at the fucking you know fight MMA UFC thing. He's always out doing something. It, it, legit. Yeah. It's a one time I I was doing a show. Call him up and, he, and see uh, ever and see if he says just nothing, just sitting there. <laughs> well, no. he's got he's got some other shit. He's I was I did a show one time. It was like, like, I think the second time I ever did it, I really didn't know him very well at all. And he was like, he was uh, texting me and he was like, hey, sorry, dude, I'm running like 20 minutes late. And I was like, yeah, that's, you know, whatever. That's fine, dude. No yeah. problem. And I was at the studio already. And then he just came in and like all fatigues and like went and like changed in the other room. He was like, check this out. And just like, it's like a picture of him over like an elk, like that he was just killing when he was there. And you're like, yeah. dude, what are you doing? Like you just. He's so, doing a hey, lot of hey, shit. Hey, hey, you gotta hurry up this elk. I get a fucking podcast. Yeah. <laughs> his his uh his turnover rate of of activities is fucking insane. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, he just operates on a. I went to lunch with him one day, and he just like there was no like, you know. Sometimes you go to lunch, you go, what, I don't know. What do you guys have for appetizers? He just went twelve beef ribs, and he just had twelve beef ribs. And then I was like, I remember going like, well, I guess I'll have six. And I got six. And I was like, oh, these are fucking huge. Like, I, I'll never get through this meat. <laughs> like, I don't, my, my molars aren't meant for this. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I don't know how the fuck he's eating that. He ate 12 fucking beef ribs and like a jalapeno. I was like, you ready to go? And I was like, I, was like, I feel sick. <laughs> yeah, every time I go, even back when he was in LA, when I was coming to town, he'd go, yeah, we should have dinner. And I don't. I don't want to, I don't like to eat with people. I think like, I, I would rather people sh shit in public yeah. and ate in private. I don't, <laughs> and I don't like to, food is you know, just, it's a fucking necessary, it's a fuel. And I like to yeah, get I it over with way. as quickly it's as possible. It's a fuel, I barely want it. <laughs> Keep going. I, the, the longer a dinner is, the more I feel, because I smoke all the time especially when I'm in an uncomfortable situation, like yeah. a dinner. So you, you don't like like enjoying like a nice dinner. You just, you're like, whatever, I'm hungry. I got to get full. Cause I remember Rarely. Nate Bargatze told Edibles me this have once. helped that. Edibles have helped me like, all right, I'm going to go out. It's and probably why your liver still lasting so what? long. So you're I, not filled with carbohydrates. Well, I eat so little. Uh, so I smoke so much. There's nothing worse as a smoker than a nice hotel where they have oh. someone open the door for you and they, have a nice day, sir. A guy in a fucking top hat yeah. and tails or something. <laughs> Whatever he is. And they say, have a nice day. I'm, I'm just going to smoke. And then I have to go find other exits, like fire <laughs> exits. Because otherwise, every 20 minutes, have a nice day. I'm still just going to smoke right there. And I'm going to go back How to my How many cigarettes do you smoke a day, do you think? Uh, less less now. Uh, like, well, like well now that I'm fucking homeless. I smoke so much at home because I'd smoke in my house and I have a bar that I smoke yeah. in my bar. And I, I would just smoke relentlessly. What were you smoking then? Now that I have to go outside to smoke. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I I bought a carton of cigarettes when I went to Hawaii. Uh, and I, I could smoke on the balcony there. You're not supposed to, but I did. Oh, yeah. uh, and I still, I had a carton last, I uh, a week after. So for over two weeks, so it was I like packing it, but pack a day, how much you So think? that's uh, 10 packs, 20 cigarettes over 15 days. So you do the math. I'm already lost. Yeah. So, so you get half do you like, pack. Do you like smoking? Yeah, I love smoking. Do you, does it give you the same buzz it did the first time you smoked? Or is it more like just. I don't know if you, uh, well, you, you wouldn't have this as a sponsor, but Zippix. I got nicotine toothpicks. They sponsor uh, my podcast. <laughs> Hold Good. on. Use Zip promo it. code Stanhope. Don't use that. <laughs> promo code Zip Smith. 
nicotine flossers. It, yeah, it's a toothpick, toothpick. with wooden nicotine on it. So toothpick. you just put, fucking pop it in, touches your gum, and then you get a little uh, yeah, nicotine. It's like system. nicotine gum. It's a smart it's idea. A toothpick. No, it's yeah. about the delivery system for me. But you're doing <laughs> this. You're doing this. Like I would be doing something with my yeah. hands, which is half of why I chain smoke on every podcast. Uh, but it looks it's so cool when you smoke. This podcast is brought to you by Lumen. Lumen is a skincare brand for men with products that will help keep your face clean all while helping you reduce the signs of aging. I got my bundle and guess who stole it? Manzi. Manzi saw it on the bus and he was like, oh, Lumen, I heard you do this read. I want to try this stuff. And he stole it. The best bundle. This is one of the best bundles you can get. I got the anti-fatigue essential bundle, which includes dark circle defense, a daily dose of the best under eye cream for men it soothes out smooths out your crow's feet and softens fine lines and wrinkles soothes out tired puffy eyes while brightening dark circles and fights a sign of premature aging with this must-have addition to your men's skincare routine the charcoal cleanser that's the one i think nancy was really after you can stop using that harsh dirty bar of soap on your face because lumen's skin detoxifying charcoal cleanser removes grime while keeping your skin's ph balanced perfect this exfoliating formula can help oily skin and remove dead skin cells and excess skin and helps repair damaged skin. That's the one Manzi stole because he's got so much damaged skin. Moisturizing balm built to target dullness and dryness, and your face will feel more hydrated and more fresh than ever. I stole that one back because I've, my face has been getting dry as crap, and I love it. The exfoliating rub, which I also stole back. Dude, I'm all about exfoliating. I'm going to go, when I get back on the bus, I'm taking this all back. This Non-irritating, less abrasive exfoliant will combine charcoal and green tea so it deeply cleanses the skin, removing dead skin cells and brightening uneven skin. Thousands trust Lumen, as me and my cameraman John Manns do, and their skincare because it works and it has 5,000 five-star reviews. Lumen is so confident that their product works, they're offering a 30-day free trial. Getting started is easy. Go to lumenskin.com. Take their two-minute online quiz, and they'll recommend the right products for your specific case. BirdCast listeners will get a free gift with the code BIRD. Get yourself a free gift. Working long hours and traveling can make all of us look tired, especially me. God dang it. Sometimes I see me on a podcast and I'm like, how tired do I look? Lumen can help reduce fine lines and eye bags. What's crazy is that like, uh, you know. We're Are doing- you going to your premiere? Yeah, definitely. I like the trappings of celebrity. I I did a movie. <laughs> what, what, what's wrong? I Can't... did a movie last year. Hold on. Yeah. Road Dog. The Road Dog with Craig Fitzsimmons. Yeah, Fitz is in it. Just, I just uh, talked to him today about it. Yeah, he said you were fucking phenomenal, and you won an award for it. It's it's yeah. I've heard nothing about it for a year. People are saying when's it coming out? I'm, like, I'm not. It's not my movie. I just acted in it. But it's now it's sometime I'll let you know they're announcing on Friday, February 10th, the uh, where we're going to be in this festival. The festival is like the 24th through the 5th of March. Yeah. Uh, so we don't even have a date when the, the movies they'll tell us on Friday when you can go see it. And then what was the award you won? Best actor. Wow. <laughs> you can, can I tell you what Fitzman said? He goes. Do you see Doug and Louie? And I said, of course. We all saw Doug mm-hmm. and Louie. He was like, that's Doug. Doug fucking nailed it. And I was like, really? He goes, it's about a... Uh, it's the same character as Louie if he didn't kill himself and was 20 years older. And yeah, I'm a 55-year-old, chain-smoking alcoholic, uh, failing comedian, uh, dying so, of liver failure. Have you just been method acting? Yeah, I didn't have to audition. <laughs> He just, he just showed you your blood work. <laughs> wait, um, do wait. Can I ask you a so? Weird so cra- they won okay, best director, ahead, yeah. best actor. I got, and uh, we're also the only thing they don't announce till after or at the pr- presentation is best picture. But we're nominated, and uh, we're up against. Did you see that? And again, we're up against. That fucking up, but it's an indie film festival, so you don't know yeah. it. 
except for in Best Picture, is that everywhere, everything, all the time? Oh, the Asian one. Yeah, like that just like won all like Golden Globes and shit. Why is it in this festival? (laughs) Oh, they want to clean up. That's that's like that's like the Asians ones all. But you talk about that. You know about that. Yemen. Go ahead. This is like me going to fucking Raleigh Durham and just going to like a local open mic competition yeah. where the winner gets 25 bucks <laughs> and go yeah thank yeah. you yeah. just what kind of do you like, movie do you like are acting you? do you like acting uh you know i didn't i didn't mind it as well again i wasn't doing fucking shakespeare in the park i was yeah. basically yeah. playing the guy from sam talent's book well hold on running the light that's really interesting you say that because uh did so who did you cast in when you read sam talent's book as that lead. Ron White. Yeah. Yeah. It's still a uh, different, David, even David if it's Kechner. a character just like, even Kechner. if it's a character oh, like Oh, you, someone though. to play it. I no, thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, no, when I, I read it, I read, I read it. Was when I read it, it was David Kagner, big cowboy boots. Oh, guy who parties. Yeah. Guys who had a couple run-ins well, with some Well, uh, obviously, you, you pictured Jeff Bridges from that fucking country music oh, yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was such, the beginning of that movie when he's in those motels, that was exactly what starting out on triple gigs was like, where um, you get these guys that are fucking way past me their and prime. You miss this energy, this this, there's a part of comedy that we don't know, which there should be like a bible written about comedy, but like we never did triple gigs, no. And triple gigs were like definitive of comedy in the what's early the name 90s. of that movie? Braveheart, not Braveheart, <laughs> alone, lonely. The Jeff Bridges, yeah, where he starts out, where he's a country music guy, he's a schlub, being on the road. I'm thinking of the, all I'm thinking is a Bradley Cooper one. Can I ask you a weird question? Do you, how do you, how do you deal with health? Like, do you go to a doctor? Never. Never. Fuck no. What, you don't know your blood pressure? No. No, don't know liver enzymes? No. Just, just ride it till it rolls? Yeah, wing it. Don't. Don't ask a lot of questions if you don't <laughs> really? want to hear the answer. Yeah. No, no, no. It's interesting you do that because I'm I'm the same as you, but the exact opposite. Because I'm hyper sensitive to like because I think I'm a little OCD. But I'm hyper sensitive to um, uh, health. Like I, I go to doctor every six months. Yeah, but you get kids and shit that make you have to do that stuff. But are you worried about death? Well, every single morning I wake up, I think about it. What do you think about it? Just, is it coming? Is it here yet? What? Do you worry about strokes? Yeah, no, I worry about everything. What, what's the that's thing? Why, that's why I drink. Oh, could you make me a cocktail, sir? I could, by the way, I could use one, too. <laughs> that, all this coming. Do you, do you, I just got to piss, piss real quick. Out. Go, go piss. Go piss. piss. Yeah, Dave, go piss. I, yeah. If I had to piss twice without either of you getting up. Wait, do you... Um, do you... Oh, sorry. Crazy heart, by the way. Crazy, Crazy heart. heart. Yeah. You remember that? He's just yeah. fucking washed up out, living out of a piece of shit car. I don't remember Crazy Heart. I do remember the um, such a good beginning of a one. movie. There's so many of those movies that oh, well, you, why'd you have to get wrapped up in the plot and the lady? The beginning of this, which is what Sam Talent's book is throughout. It's all the best parts being, of the movie. I, mean, I don't know if, if I can we can say this out loud, but it's being made into a movie, right? Can we say that out loud? No, I no. My movie is the same as his book. For which real? Sucks. Yeah. When I got the movie and I read the script, I I thought I'm not going to fucking Chicago in the winter. But then I read the script yeah. and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. And so I'm wait, not when doing see, anything. When can we see your movie? Huh? When can we see your movie? Are you are you high? <laughs> is it? I'm so sorry. Yeah. No. I'm we drunk, find drunk. out on Friday. They oh, don't yeah, tell yeah, you yeah. the 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 lineup. It's it's you know, like. A wild card games a t- t- location to be determined oh, for real so it's at this film festival the hollywood real independent film festival which is way too long a name yeah. i don't know anything about it i'm not going to be here for my red carpet that's why i asked i'll you- be in australia and my one fucking best actor one film one festival one best actor and i'm fucking done Yes, Done. but I'm going to be playing in Sydney, Australia on that night, February 24th. What, uh, when's the movie come out? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh. Did 
someone ordered DoorDash? Oh my God. <laughs> hey, Dave, do you, are you curious? Dang. I'm, are you going to piss now? I've been pissed once. Oh, you didn't. That's because you go to the doctor every six months. You get your enzymes checked. Are you going to the doctor? And that's one thing I, I do. do for my health, Bert. I hydrate and then I go. Fuck. No, you don't hydrate. You do not I hydrate. I was chugging a giant fucking water all through Bill Burr, and then I. Oh yeah, because he's sober. That is a good. Did you drink in front of Bill Burr? <laughs> no. God, that's so so Doug not being Doug. He's so unbranded. Um, I go to the doctor when, uh, but only because my wife makes me. Yeah, I wouldn't. That's... I wouldn't go at all. I had a joke. I just get I just get like text messages. They're like to confirm your appointment, hit C. And I'm like, I didn't make an do you appointment. Get anxiety about going to the doctor? Yeah, a little you bit. You don't do anything unhealthy. I mean, you smoke like fucking I've, crazy. I smoked for years. I I you know do this gay thing now. I don't mean so gay in a bad stupid. way, but it's smoking is so much cooler. But I this I've been doing this since my wife was pregnant the first time because she was just like the smoking was making her nauseous. Yeah. So I was like, I guess I got to switch to this shit, and I can't. I'm trying to get Georgia, my oldest daughter, to she vapes, and I'm trying to get her to start smoking. Yeah, just really? Smoke. Yeah, you gotta go just smoke. It is cooler. What's well, cooler? And I'm at least you know what right the now. fuck you're doing. You have a cigarette yeah. with Doug, please. All right, fine. Please have a cigarette with Doug. Doug, so can, much I, cooler can I bum a smoke? cigarette from you? It is much cooler. It's so much cooler. <laughs> Thank you. I always travel with a variety pack. The that would be a cool if they did it like the way the way they used to do uh, the way they do chips, variety pack chips. They did that with cigarettes. They're like, "Yo, Marlboro Reds for late night." Bert, yeah, million dollar idea. That's million a fucking idea. million dollar idea, right? It is there. a million dollar idea. Variety pack cigarettes. No, I don't do million dollar ideas. Here's thousand dollar ideas. All right, <laughs> I'll, I'll, then I'll give you. By the way, I have like nine million dollar ideas. You, I'll give you I'm, a ninety-three thousand dollar idea. Billion dollar ideas. Billion dollar ideas. I have billion dollar ideas. I run by Segura, and he always shits on him, and he is consistently fucking wrong. Dude, I created, I created, <laughs> Two Bear Sports Management <clears throat> in two thousand twenty. Two Bear Sports Management. And he so, was against it. And I said, we sign athletes. We become their agents. We promote them. We sell merch for them. We take them to the next level. And then, and we, we, and, and, and we, like, we got our fans to get behind that guy. They buy their jersey. They, and then we find, like, legit athletes. He was like, the dumbest idea I've ever heard. I took it to our agents. Our agents were like, the dumbest idea I've ever, you've ever, I've ever heard. Literally, six months later, ten months later, Fucking Barstool Sports starts Barstool Sports Management. And now they manage athletes, and it's a fucking million-dollar company. They they do their merch. They, hey, we're behind this person. Support this person. Everyone follows them. Everyone buys their fucking merch. They support the athlete. They get a percentage. Man, I, Two Bears Racing, to this day, I'm fucking so angry. Well, I'm not angry, but we, we you know, our touring so bad that, like, I haven't gotten him in a race yet, but I got Adam Carolla, Joe Rogan, and Tom Segura to do a race, a, a, a pace race, or a whatever it is, endurance race. And I, I have million-dollar ideas, billion-dollar ideas. I just can't, I haven't been able to facilitate them yet, but they're right there. They're on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> I have just, no, I have nothing. I just bro. went on a huge. I got I got thousand dollar ideas. Well, give me a thousand dollar idea. I'll be at the Funny Bone next weekend. That's my thousand dollar. What, 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 what Funny Bone? <laughs> oh no, I'm not, I'm not at the Funny Bone. I'm at uh, what's uh, Hyenas in uh, Dallas. Dallas, Texas. Yeah, yeah. That was a good plug. Yeah, that's my, plug. That's my thousand yeah. dollar idea. Yeah. Come well, out, come Hyenas. If you're getting so a funny. commission from the Funny Bone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How about well, short cigarettes? Weekend. That would be my cigarette idea. Like dog walkers. No, no, like, like literally half the size. So you have one of those, forty. Like a they, Marlboro. They made thing? Marlboro seventy twos, but I'm yeah. saying literally the half size. So you would have a forty pack instead of a twenty pack in this packet. But they're because most people just uh, smoke a couple drags outside of the. You throw it out before it's really yeah. done. Yeah. Or, or Dave Attell, you ever clean up his ashtray? <sighs> He smokes like the first three drags and then crushes out the best part. Oh. Like when I quit smoking, the one that I clinched halfway off and it's- Are you smoking a cigarette? Nice. 
Yeah, he is. Oh, yeah. What's the best part of a cigarette? Is it the light and that first drag? Um, Or is it the end? It depends. No, yeah, it depends on what cigarette it is. It's always the best cigarettes are always the first one of the day, uh, the one right after a meal, uh, one with coffee. after, After the meal. With coffee is is a coffee. Great I, I actually stopped drinking coffee once when I quit smoking, and then never really started drinking coffee. Occasionally, I do. Uh, really? Yeah, but it's not like I'm against it. But I used to like yeah. be like eight cups of coffee a day guy because it does make cigarettes taste better. Yeah, beer, beer and cigarette is a great the, combination. The, the, too. the, the hardest one. Uh, which gets me back in every time I quit is the one that's connected to most writing, writing and oh, yeah. chain smoking. Like, yeah, I have to, I have to write my fucking Australia set. Usually I write like the day before mentally, but I'm going to have to yeah. write before I get there. Cause if I can't smoke there, first of all, Would fucking we- Australia, you cunts <coughs> the, to duty free uh, allows you Two packs of cigarettes, one open pack and one sealed pack. Pack it. I'm going to, for fucking, and they're 25 pack, they sell their cigarettes, $40. Really? I'm like, I, I, I think I'm going to, I've tried everything to quit smoking, but I think I might try spite. Wait. <laughs> I'm not going to buy fucking $40 <laughs> shitty cigarettes. They're not even like American spirits. You know, they're looser. They Australian play, spirits. I'm guessing. So they're dark. I'm guessing they're, they're Aboriginal. Shit. They're dark wrapped. What? Well, aren't American spirits? You said this from Native, about Native yeah, American. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. I was just going to try. Are their version sweet, of American sweet, spirits. Sweet. I, Andrew Huberman who's a professor at a, a big university. You know him? No. He said smoking cigarettes is the best thing you can do in your life. I just, it was like a viral clip. It's the like most viral clip I've ever posted everywhere, anywhere. <laughs> he's a professor. He's, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. Swear to God, Andrew Huberman said. He said nicotine, the, not cigarettes. Yeah, I don't think cigarettes. No, he said, no, he said smoking. Andrew Huberman. You sure? He said smoking. Said smoking cigarettes is the best thing you can do for your life. That's not. That's just us having a great time yesterday. It's the biggest clip it's, I've ever posted yeah, on TikTok. That's back when they were uh, like a dollar and 40 cents a pack. No. Andrew Huberman said to Tom Segura, smoking cigarettes is the best thing you can do. He goes, what? what uh, they goes, nicotine, but here's what's crazy. Yeah. Nicotine yeah. is neuroprotective. Nicotine yeah. is so it's great. It's good for nicotine. your body. It's good for your body. Everyone should take so. it, no, but no, it increases acetylcholine and dopamine and epinephrine, leads to heightened focus, improved memory, so. and is can offset neurodegeneration in Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. So you guys don't worry about we Alzheimer's or Parkinson's? This, because you this, smoke as Professor Huberman says smoking cigarettes well, is no, good for you? That's, no, that's okay. because the smoking cigarettes is, is what he's saying. Not the tobacco. And the fucking, there's a bunch of other yeah. shit in these that are bad for you. But just nicotine, like if you uh, just Dr. take the gum Drew, just or the, the other night on a fucking uh, so, so Annie Letterman's podcast, uh, Dr. Drew was a nicotine is not a problem with. He said, I don't understand why these vaping laws are so crazy. So, so what these- you're saying ultimately is Tom Sugura is irresponsible in that clip. T- Tom's a liar. And I'm, I'm just kidding. All right, clip that, that clip the I'm that kidding out of there. Yeah. No, but he, uh, <laughs> Doctor Doctor Drew told me it was way better to switch to vaping than this, even though it's clearly way gayer. But he, uh, but the Doctor Drew itself, said that, not him. Not, this is Doctor Drew's words. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's gay. But the shit. nicotine itself, I think, like if you just chew the gum or you just have the patch or something oh, like that, I think it's there's nothing bad. I think well, it's really good for you. Problem with it. For the, for, I think. Wait, 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 what's wait, that let's for? Pivot, let's pivot. What do you think about Tom Segura? Do you like him? I'll be do you, Hang on, no, no. Be real. Be real. I'm Team and Bert. Please All shit on him. <laughs> I like. But like, he's like, you've ne- have you ever met him? I don't think I've ever met Tom. Why? Why do you think that is? Because he thinks he's better than you. He's he's just like he. Yeah, he's kind of highfalutin. <laughs> thinks he's better than everybody. Whereas like the real, <laughs> like you know the the Joe Rogans, the Burt Kreischers of the world, they're out there mixing it up with the young. How many times are you in Austin a year? Probably like four times a year. Right? I'm, I'm in Austin a lot, and he's never had you on your mom's house. He's never even asked. He's I just never even found out Doctor Drew moved to Austin. I'm like what? Yeah. yeah. Well, he's, what? I think he's here he's, and there, he's bisexual. right? Oh, okay. But, uh, <laughs> but wait, Doug, what do you think about Tom Segura? <laughs> I just found out that fucking Dr. Drew is doing his wife's podcast instead of him or something. 
Doctor, he does your mom's house with no, he Christy. Well, he's got he's got a no, studio. He, does, in he there. does. He has. He has. So does Doctor Drew have a separate thing with his wife? And is that like no, no, no. Spoken? Drew, is Drew that like? I think you're getting all your info confused. Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> he's I think your mom's I think any of this is right. Yeah, none of this is accurate. <laughs> Am I no. wrong? Have you ever done Tom's podcast? No, he's Why? never invited me. He's never invited you. Yeah. Do you think it's because he doesn't like you, or he's jealous of you? You had carte blanche. I think I'm confusing. Do you want to start a show callback. with me that's about people who have never been invited on Tom's podcast? Please. Me and you will just talk every episode. Well, I, don't know. Be- I don't even, I don't know if these podcasts have guests. I mean, I know yeah, they yeah, exist, yeah, yeah. but unless I'm like warming up to uh, do your podcast. Tom, if you're listening, I am one podcast invite away from switching onto your team and trashing Shut everybody. The fuck <laughs> up. Oh, I listen to yours with Orny Adams. And granted, I was at 1.25 speed, just ahead of, you know. Oh, just, you went fast? Yeah, just a little bit fast. A little I, bit it's fast. Funny, it's funny you do that. I slow down history podcasts. Oh, so well, that's a different really story. Like, Hitler had one testicle. <laughs> that's the only way you can sleep. A dog, a goat bit off his penis. <laughs> Keep going. The point is, I remember the big splash of buzz of uh, he's the, comedian, comedian. the bad yeah, guy yeah, yeah, on yeah, Comedian. Yeah, yeah. And then you slowly didn't hear of him. And I've, I've never like seen him playing a comedy club I'm about to play or anything. So I yeah. just never heard his name. And again... I've lived 18 years in a place with no stand-up comedy. They, they so, did him dirty on that uh, documentary. Hardcore dirty. It's him and Seinfeld, which is already just the most unfair, like, two people to profile. Yeah. And the first time I watched it, I remember uh, being like, oh, yeah, this is such an interesting thing about Seinfeld. And this guy's just a bitter asshole. And then the second time I watched it, I'd been doing comedy for a few years. And I was like, I don't even care about the Seinfeld part. I just want to hear this dude's story about, like, get, like, fucking struggling and then finally getting new faces and then not, yeah. it not happening the way you wanted it to happen. And you're like, if from the outside perspective looking in, I could see where you're like, oh, he's just a bitter asshole. Doing Letterman, but they living, take away your lupus joke. Yeah. And you're like, like, and you're like but hold on, that's the punchline. The word lupus it, is the punchline. Live, like, when you're living it and you go, dude, I completely relate to this yeah. guy. Like, he's been fucking struggling. He gets his big break and they tell him he can't use the word the day of. The fucking set. You're like, this is so brutal to do to someone. Or that's the most relatable. I have to watch thing. that again. You haven't seen it in a while. I, I, right when it came out, and I don't remember shit they about do it. Gary other than Orny Adams. They do Gary Valentine dirty. They do Gary Valentine dirty. They do Opie or uh, uh, or Orny dirty. I feel and, like we should. Like, well, he's Barry more Katz more client at the time, Barry, right? No, 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 no. He was. Oh, he George, wasn't. Oh no, no Barry Katz just pops hold in. On, I'm hold sorry. on. I'm sorry. I, I got that so, wrong. He's Shapiro's client he's at the Rick's, time. He's uh, George Shapiro's client. I'm, I, uh, but yeah, Barry Katz knows him very well. Right. So Barry comes in and snipers him. I love Barry. I, I, I'm not going to shit on Barry because I, I was his client. But Barry snipers him because he knows him. Yeah. And he knows what he doesn't know, and he knows what he knows, and he goes. I think you need to do less talk and more stand up. Stop with the talk, do the stand up. You know who doesn't do that? Uh Oh yes, it wasn't it Boston dude. What's his name? Uh, just Bob, on his Bob right, name. right. Yeah, Stephen right, right. Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright. Wright. <laughs> and then where the hell is Orny. <laughs> Orny is lure, lure, lure bite. Yeah, but what's he done lately? And Barry Katz goes, knows that he goes, he just won an Oscar. <laughs> for such a, a great film. line. And, he goes, and, yeah, but what's he doing now? He goes, he just won an Oscar. And and you're like, and it, but, it, but, it, but hang on. This is the thing I tried to say to Orny, and I tried to say to like anyone listening to this. We were all Orny Adams yeah. at that moment. Yeah. Sitting on the couch with arrogance and going like, I'm the guy. I won, uh, hold on, I won... Uh, San Francisco comedy competition? Didn't you beat Dave Cook? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm I'm saying to you. I was yeah, I was saying to Sorry, you. Sorry, I was but like no, but like but like we were all we were all the fucking ball of the parade at one point, and your arrogance is unmeasured. And you and everyone's had like a bitter moment of being pissed off when things aren't working out for you. It just wasn't like caught on video. And then oh. just, and like if you're his guy, if you're like his manager and you're like executive producing this thing, fucking protect your dude a little bit more. Like dude, don't put that out. They there. fucked him. Like, they I did him know. dirty. They did yeah. him. Seinfeld did him dirty. Yeah, he did. I, I was just gonna say that Orny Adams. 
I, I'm so I forget the point I was trying to make by bra- listening to that, even at a, just a little bit higher speed. He sounds like Brody Stevens oh. meets Rick Shapiro. Right. Yeah, he he he, he does, does have the yeah. Brody thing, but uh, uh, uh. yeah, 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 I can see that. Yeah, Orny Orny is a guy that's been in the game so fucking long, like he's like all of us, just OG, where he's just been in the game. And what's crazy is that like that I don't know that he's that, got more followers than me. He's yeah. doing well. He's doing great. He's doing just put in a special. Unless those are Russian bots. <laughs> those are, they, how did I make it Russian bots? I don't know. You should. You can get some. I'll make some calls. But wait, wait, Doug. Do you, what do you want? What? What do you want? From like DoorDash? You get, no, you're. You can get. You can, <laughs> pretty you high. You can get everything you want. You can get every. I have you're the guy, everything you're the guy, I want. You you can get everything you want. What do you want? Like that's a great question. Esoterically, I want my fucking house back. Okay, we, you know we can't I never have left that, that house. All right, That's all, right, all I did in life that. was go like, on the road or stay in my house. Do you, my do house you, is the only thing I want. I, I, I'm serious. It, uh, otherwise, I would say there's nothing I want. That's the problem. Hang on, hang on, like, hang on. But no, but for real, for real. I was answering. No, no, but lose the lose lose. All of it, right? So you did the movie, right? You enjoyed the yeah. movie. You got best actor. Did that? Did that make you feel? It was good? weird because I play a drunk and I had to do it sober. Like I don't ever perform without yeah. drinking. But no stand up. If you're doing a, uh, by the way, I've been in a car with you. Where you had to drink day. and drive. Like if I can do, that's why I do one show a night, two show a night. I would either be not drunk enough in one or too drunk in the other. Yeah, yeah one show a night. Uh, for this, you're doing fucking, you don't know, 14-hour days Yeah. Uh, in Chicago in the you, fucking winter. You went so sober for the whole production? Yeah. Well, really? no, no. For all the working parts, yeah. Yeah. Which is the part where, oh, I normally drink. No, no, I'm no pre- cold beers Now I'm the day. playing a drunk. There's a couple times towards the end of the, all right, I got to do this fucking one yeah. scene. Let me take two and we'll be fucking done by yeah. the time. And then I, yeah, drink at the hotel, but I, I, I drank so little, smoked so much more because I'm a oh, chain really? smoker. Yeah. But when you have to do five scenes, six scenes or six takes. Of where the takes, cigarettes got to be at the same place. Yeah. And you're, it's yeah. Like I'm burning cigarettes and then, but I'm smoking in every scene yeah. over and over. Take 10. Yeah, I smoked three times as much as I ever did just filming that movie. But would you? I'm you saying want, this clear so I can have a liability if I get lung but cancer. But do you want more movie. of that in your life? I yeah. No, I, well, like, what do you want? Like for real? And I, I know you say your house, but like, like, because I wonder that. I wonder that for myself, where I go, what do I want? And for real, I remember you hearing. I remember you saying on a podcast with, <clears throat> with Tom Rhodes, you said, "I've written all my jokes." I'm done. Now I'm just rewriting my jokes. and I don't know what I want. And I remember hearing that and not understanding it. And then I got to a place after this, maybe in the middle of this last special, where I went, oh, I re- actually really get what he's saying. Like, what, yeah, what do I want? Like, what, like, what, what, not, not legacy, not any, not, not, I don't want another house. I'm saying like, as a comedian, what, what, what makes, inspires me to like create, Cause you're all our goats. We 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 look up to you in a way you'll never understand. You'll never understand it until your funeral, and you and, and I wish you could be there. You should fake your death. You Personally, your death. Uh, I'm an Atel guy, but you're pretty. Good. I have this idea for uh, I have this idea for Deadio, where uh, hold on, <laughs> stop right there, stop right there. No, it's cameo for after you're dead. Hold on, you're you're not being real right now. You're not being real right now. Did, it, did someone text this to you? No. I swear to God. Peter, do you remember when I said this? I swear to God. Keep going. This you, is the most brilliant remember, like, fucking idea I've ever heard. Do you, keep going. Do you tell, did I oh, tell you, you not 10 you minutes ago that I've listened to your last few podcasts oh, to get prepared for You're this. such a cunt. You're such a cunt. 
You're such a piece <laughs> of so fucking shit. I'm so excited, I got so excited. He so started excited. looking real <laughs> sleepy, and now he's going to bolt you of adrenaline. You just me my half-ass idea, and I got excited like... You're such a fucking asshole. <laughs> Dude, no, but it was worth it for that moment of joy that you had. You go, that was my idea. I, was like, I had this idea too. And you made me feel like my idea was worth something. And I was like, if he had it and then I had it. Don't you You're such get a it? Fucking asshole. I dosed you. Yeah, you dosed me with my own idea. What do you want, Doug? I. Uh, all right. Well, you started this with the movie, which is something. Yeah. I, no, I didn't love doing it. It's a fucking long day. And but I was prepared. I was professional. I fucking knew my lines and I knew how much I could rewrite my lines without them freaking out. Yeah. And uh yeah, so I I did I did well on that. And it's so nice to not have to like yo, you you give me the script, I'm doing this at what time. Yeah. But it is fucking work. And it was five weeks in Chicago where the first thing I could say, when did I become successful when I didn't have to ever be in winter again? <laughs> I could have canceled this fucking Australia tour. Oh, oh, you're there in the. Well, because all this shit that's going on with my house and the bullshit. Yeah. And now we need you to sign stuff. Well, I'm not there. Like I'm in <laughs> 200 miles away. Fucking. And then. Yeah. And I'm like, how much of this shit is going to happen when I'm in Australia? I should fucking cancel the tour. I have a fucking decent excuse. Yeah. And then I realized, well, then that tour is going to be hanging over my head when it's not summer. And I want to go to summer right now. I have so many going. inside baseball questions I don't want to ask Doug. Yeah, please, because I'm high as shit. What's your nut? <laughs> like, what do you need to make a year to, to survive? <clears throat> I don't have any. You don't even I know. I really have no idea. Like I get a guy what, that what's does. Your, what's your nut? What what I need to make a year? Yeah. Like what would you mean? What I okay. want to make a year, or okay. what I absolutely so, need? No, our bills. Yeah. Like what's uh, your bills? Uh, would just be property taxes. I'm, I, I mortgages are. This is what I love paid off. Doug. This is what I love about Doug, and this is. This is what I loved about Leanne. Because Leanne, when Leanne one time called me. I was having a rough time on the road. She goes, fly into Tucson, go to Doug's house, hang out, chill out, take a day off for yourself. Hang out with Doug. Doug is always, I mean, I've, I've said this too many times, but he's always been like a, like a, I don't know what the right word. A, a is this sprite? getting maudlin? No, or no, 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 but it's like a fun, a fun dude to be around where it makes you realize like, oh, life's just life. It's fun. It should be jokes. It should be comedy. So I fly into there, I come home, I come to Leanne, I tell her, I said, this place is fucking amazing. I go, he's got, like, I think you have, what do you have, like five houses? No, I had, well, I gave, I gave Chaley's there, so I'm like, yeah. oh, you do so much. They, had, like, they run the fucking. five houses at one point, like one four. of the huge compound, another couple outside of them, and then, and I said to Leanne, I was like, this is the fucking deal. This is the fucking deal. You get these houses and then yeah, no, but these are ramshackled houses. This they're is not, not they're, they're not, not ramshackled, they're not, but they're not. If you, if you came from your neighborhood to there, you'd go this Which ramshackled. A little, it's, it's, it's obviously it's Arizona. You might not it's say busy. ramshackled, but you wouldn't you'd, say ramshackled. You'd say something like, like that. Yeah. Shabby. You'd probably use shabby because you don't have a good imagination. I'm talking to a listener that's <laughs> <laughs> <this> doesn't <laughs> like me, and I'm fuck you. <laughs> And so I said, Leah, I was like, that's the fucking gig. That's the gig is like, and, and I remember right after that, I don't know if you remember this, but you and Johnny Depp called me. Oh yeah. And you were like, yo, I remember Johnny Depp was like, hi, hey, it's Johnny. <laughs> or you like to party. Come over and hang out with me and dog. I literally looked at everyone at the party. And I was like, it was good seeing you guys. <laughs> and then whatever. And then Johnny bailed it was me and Doug hanging out at, Johnny Johnny Depp's oh, house. Oh, that's right. You missed him. Yeah, yeah. And we hung out at Johnny Depp's house, and we just partied at one of his houses. And I looked at this like compound structure. Of, Johnny Depp has the whole yeah. street, except, except for, for one, one holdout house. One house. <laughs> yeah, and I went. That's the gig. That's the fucking gig. That's the thing I strive for. Always was a compound. Yeah, I want to have a compound. I I I, I fucked it up because I'm a, I'm a coward. But uh, is that you? Yeah. 
That's not you. Yeah. I'm fucking, I'm me dying of liver failure. Is that you? Yeah. That's I guess that's, maybe that's a, uh, uh, what do you call that? Spoiler alert. <clears throat> you look great in that picture. You've always looked good with a fucking beanie on. Can I see those shoes again? Yeah. <laughs> nice fleece. Uh, it might be fleece like socks. Do you shave your head for it? No, nah, I just, I, I, I kept it. I was keeping it at a number one. Yeah. I guess there it does look shaved, but at a number one, because that way I could keep my hair consistent. Oh, like yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. This wasn't good. a movie like your movie. No, this no, was... no. By the way, hold on. Don't even start. My movie was, there was, we had real issues with, because uh, I no, did. No, let me, let me finish because my thoughts are here for a limited time only. Uh, the girl that was the COVID compliancy girl on the first day we were shooting, yeah. uh, freezing her ass off in a parking lot. They go, yeah, it's COVID. And she'll just take your temperature every here and again and just jot it down. Yeah. By the end, she was the assistant director. This is the kind of production yeah. it was. And uh, she also, she was an assistant director. And, oh, and she had a role in it. Oh. Yeah, she she was oh, playing. So People were doing everything. It's one of these, it was collapsing due to an internal fucked up thing that happened. Like the, a producer fucked over another oh. right at the last minute. So there was this sense of collapse the whole time. When's this movie come out? <laughs> you fucking kill me. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm so happy right now. I don't think I'll ever. Be I listened to the again. twelve shots with uh, uh, Steve Byrne. Yeah, Steve Byrne. Yeah. Steve Byrne always surprises me. What do you mean? I mean he's just like uh, he's such a great guy, and yeah. he's always been very warm to me. And it just he always kind of came across as a comic that would be like different than me. But like, to listen to him, yeah, no, he's a fucking dude. Like that's a fun game to play. Let's play comics that Theo Vaughn. Oh, I love Theo Vaughn. Theo Vaughn, I completely misread because he was doing some douchey thing I hated on a Howie Mandel's show. Oh, it was uh, a prank show or something, right? Yeah, it was an awful prank show. And yeah. I love hidden camera pranks, and bad ones make me very upset. Uh, so, hey, Pete, can I get another drink, please? Yeah, yeah no, no, Ashton no. Kutcher, I'll never, just from that punk Ashton show. Ashton Kutcher's a genius. You know oh, that? what kind of idiot... He's going to pull up at the valet. What idiot would give their keys to a complete stranger? Oh, that was, that was, that was branding 101. <laughs> that was when he wanted to brand himself. And uh, look, I'm like, I'm such a fan. A fuck. He wanted to brand himself You're a fan? as. fan? What? You're a fan? I, I like Ashton Kutcher. He's a genius. He actually, he actually is a genius. He's a legit genius. Legit genius. Uh, but no. Wait, hang on. What was what was the? I thought I was prescient with Theo Vaughn as an answer, but what was your game show name? The person? yeah. What was the question? Comics who? Oh, no, what? I don't remember anymore. You were like, let's play comics who? No, we say a comic and then go around the room and just say one word. Uh, okay. This will go viral. Okay. I dare that? you to tweet that. <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> By the way, Roseanne Barr. Go around the room. Uh, a brilliant legend, hardcore legend, hardcore legend. Yeah, it's two words. So that's what I stop myself uh, okay, from okay, not okay, breaking. Okay, 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 we're okay, doing okay, paragraphs okay, okay. now. Okay, all right, fine. Right, right. Cunt, cunt, cunt. Um, uh, uh, let's go back to my Theo Vaughn game. Go ahead. A uh, 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 comedian that you completely dismissed that turned oh, out to be. I have a well, lot of good... Tom Segura. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I watched this act when he was young, and I was like, "There's no way this is happening." And then uh, I, 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 no one's no, more no, about someone you've career. known, like as yeah. a, as a like a, a, a as a celebrity, I guess. Theo Vaughn's like the Carrot biggest. Top was the one where back then it was everyone was shitting on Carrot Top, and and then when yeah. I met him, I'm like, "You're the greatest fucking guy He's, ever." He That's caught a lot of br he caught like the brunt of everything almost for no reason. Like it, it was just like you're too different from what we all yeah, think okay. a comedian's supposed to be. I don't, I don't even know if are there people like that anymore? Because no. there, I think it was, I think Larry the Cable Guy might have been the last of the, like everyone resoundly 
That's yeah, because it would have been around then that the b- social media exploded, and I would no argue one's that big. I would argue. I remember saying out this out loud. I go, if, if I could have a career like that, I'd fucking love it. I'd love it. But I'm saying there was a, there, there was always Dane Cook was the whipping yeah. boy for a while. Uh, yeah, I remember that when I first started. Dane Jeff Cook, Dunham and Pina was an pair. easy one. Uh, yeah, but there's there was always one, and I don't know that there. I mean, there's a lot of comics that a lot of comics hate, but a lot of comics hate a lot more. Well, there's comics, a, there's than comics they used I think to. that co- uh, it's interesting. I think maybe the world's been so polarized with like politics that you get like you get darlings, you know, you still get darlings, and then you get people who sell tickets. And then the darlings, I guess I don't know, I don't, I couldn't even tell you who they are, but like they, they're held on a pedestal, and I think now the world attacks the darlings, whereas they used to attack they were the cable guy and Dane. Now they go like, well, fuck that type, that fuck brand. a guy, who, fuck a guy who won't say what he means, or fuck yeah. a guy who won't. Won't bring it. Well, now it's like, it's almost, it, it, it's this weird, it's like fucking the inverse of reality and where things are supposed to be. Well, now they'll be the person who like got the development deal, got the network contract, got all this. And they're watching, they're on a show that has like a hundred thousand people viewing it. And then there's the dude with the podcast with like 5 million people viewing it. Michael and you're like, Che, so who's Michael the mainstream che and, Michael here? Che and Tim Dillon. Do you remember who's, that fight? Who, by the way, I love both of them to yeah. death, uh, but it was the... That was an interesting, you, like, you little example. <laughs> no. Do you know I who just, Michael Che is? No, I did the Annie Letterman's podcast last night, and this conversation happened. So I'm like, same conversation. Uh, yeah, I think they were explaining that beef to me. All right, uh, well, let's move on to something Annie Letterman didn't cover <laughs> on your podcast. No. Bert, what do we got? <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, do you remember there's this was a good example of that, that dynamic, which I, I you remember this was years ago, but when Stern and Ari yeah. had their thing and there was something about it, which I think most people, no matter how uh, embarrassing he's been over the last few years and like refuses, Stern. Stern and yeah. refuses to leave his home because he's scared of germs. And now he's turned into like this old terrified yeah. germaphobe or whatever. But Howard Stern was Howard Stern. Howard Stern through, through his whole career. Howard, Howard Stern is still Howard Stern. Well, I'm saying, however you feel about where he is now, yeah. I think no one could deny he's Howard. He he was Howard Stern through well, his career, and he did something crazy. But when he was beefing with Ari, and he goes to him at one point, it was like the most out of touch I've ever heard like yeah. a legend be, where he goes, he goes, look, you're out there doing a podcast. If you want to get into broadcasting, here's what you do. You come to a radio show, you get the 3 a.m. shift, you work your <laughs> way up to where you're about, and you're like, dude, these are the rules from like the '60s, yeah. man. Like, yeah, how do I get into would comedy? Ari, it's like watching. how do I get into comedy? Well, you send a VHS. Yeah, tape. like it's like, dude, what Five world are you act. living in where you think you're gonna tell somebody, hey, you know what you need to do? Take a job for fifty grand a year and wake up every night at eight p.m. to come in to do it. You're like, why would anyone do it that way yeah. when we can just like do what we do? And so it was some. It was very weird to see someone so out of touch with like yeah, how shit works and, now. The, the, he, yeah. There's some kind of dependency on that job. To, uh, those people, if I retire, I'll die. Like he, there's a reason that you have almost Joe Rogan money, and you're still, <laughs> dude, dude. Uh, could you please tell me the story? Because I just realized this is not at all the story that oh, I talked oh, no, to no. Annie Letterman about. So Michael you, you, J, please I'll, tell I'll, me. I'll tell you. Sure, tell sure. Me. Yeah. I, Michael Che and Tim ended up getting into a thing. Michael Che is on Saturday Night Live. He's the head writer for years, and he's the Weekend Update, you know, guy yeah. there. And uh, Tim, you know, is obviously blown up and is like one of the biggest comics, like his a huge podcast and everything. He's got probably and, the biggest podcast on Patreon. Yeah, and probably. And I'll say this knowingly: one of the biggest podcast guests you can get ever get on your podcast. You're, he's you're just, a million, two million views because he has money top to bottom. The second he comes on, he he's thought it, whether he does it preemptively or not, he's thought about what he's going to say, and he has great material. He and fucking he's just, delivers, and he's uh, he's fucking hilarious. He's a monster, just a monster. A mon- just monster talent. I, I I knew Tim when he was first starting, like in New York, and like dude, there's like immediately you could just tell this dude is just like fucking incredible, next level, next incredible level. And, and, and no disrespect to Michael Che, but like I doubt 
Michael Che could do on a podcast what Tim Dillon does. Probably not on a podcast. But, but only saying that because yeah. I, I, I I'm pretty good on a but, podcast. Okay. Segura's pretty good on a podcast. Bobby Kelly's pretty good on a podcast. Rich Voss, Doug Stanhope, Dave Smith, Louis Shea Gomez. Tim Dillon's the next fucking level. He's he's next game. He's yeah. next game. I, he's he's I, incredible. He's incredible. he's incredible. And by the way, Che, I also started with him in New York, also was an incredible talent. Like really was an excellent comedian. But he, so... Tim, I th- it all became, it all came like down to like I think a thing where like feelings were fucking involved. But For real? Tim uh, like tweeted something uh, critical of Saturday Night Live, you know, like trashing them, and then Che kind of like snapped back about that. I think kind of felt like he was, you know, like oh fuck you. I don't know if it might have been the thing he wrote or not, but he yeah. felt like his people were kind of attacked. So then he went at him, but then he kind of like was like. I forget exactly what he said, but it, it did come off like a little bit of a thing where it's like, well, look, you couldn't get on a show like this. And that's why you had to go do your little podcast thing. And it's like, no, nah, that's not really the game anymore, dude. It, it, like, that's a, not really none of a, us. None of us in this world, at least I'll say for me, none of us are going like, man, I wish I could get on Saturday Night Live. But instead, I have to do this podcast thing. <laughs> You're like, I have no interest no one, in doing that. No, it's one, like no the, one. It, it, it remind. it's like the game changed a lot, like since even I've been in it. You know, like that. It's like no one's going like, man, I hope I could get a late night set, man. I really hope I really hope I can get invited onto some late night show and they can tell me I can do six clean minutes and then they can go over every line with a fine tooth comb and they can tell me what words I'm allowed to say. No one gives a shit about that anymore. No. What I care about is like putting an hour out on fucking YouTube. That's going to fucking blow up. That's what I care. Like I'm working on my next hour right now. I could give a shit less about being invited on any network show to do anything. (laughs) You could give a shit less. And I mean this respectfully about even being on Netflix. I mean like Netflix, like right now YouTube's blowing the fuck up. I love Netflix. I'm my next specials on Netflix, but, but, but it's, the game is changing currently. And if you're not watching it, then you're literally in the dark. Well, if you if you looked at one of these guys, like you know, like uh, like a bunch of friends of mine who are like great comics, like uh, like Mark Norman and yeah. Joe List and great. Sam Morrell, and like and look Ari, just a lot of yeah. these guys put their, their YouTube's out, uh, uh, their their hours out on YouTube, and like let's say Netflix had come to them, all of them blew up and got millions of views. If Netflix had come to them and offered them like a big, you know, check to put it on Netflix, and you're just you're trying to give them advice yeah. in hindsight, you're looking at you go. Look, I understand where you might want to take that check, but you might want to just put this thing up on YouTube because there's it's Shane just Gillis gonna did, blow up. Shane Gillis just did, and oh, I, yeah, I don't like to okay. be the guy that does numbers and stuff, but like four shows at the Majestic in Dallas, four shows at the Majestic. That's a lot of tickets to be yeah. sold. That's a lot of tickets, and that's all the money is going to Shane's pocket. Yep. I mean, I don't mean to be disrespectful at all to Michael Che. At all, I, I I think that guy's a tremendous talent. But I, my argument would be, now that you're done from Saturday Night Live, right? He's done. I I don't know. Did he leave this I think, year? I, I think he, he might have left. Start a podcast and definitely move those tickets because well, he, he's a great talent. He's he a is fucking funny guy. He's so good. He's so good. And 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 I don't. And I would argue, uh, black dudes are underrepresented in podcasting. Yeah, I mean, eighty five South is my favorite, one of my favorite podcasts. I would, I would definitely do that because I don't think, I don't think Michael Che is selling what Shane Gillis sells at the Majestic. Yeah, I really, I really don't know, but I also, I'll be interested to see what his next move is because, like, it's he really is smart. an incredible talent. He needs to get away from his agents. He needs to get away from his agents. That's the other thing about that show is it's like, especially when he was like the head writer and doing the weekend. Dude, that guy's got a You're skill set. So much time. He's doing got a that. skill set we do not have. Oh, for sure. He's got a skill set that you go to, you go to, oh, shit, fucking, I got to leave soon. College soon. to get, like, yeah. I mean, that guy's a fuck. He's funny as fuck. Him and Colin are hilarious together. Do you yeah. if him and Colin started a podcast? That would be that would be awesome. It would be the biggest podcast. And it'd be cool to just see the them fucking like just like with no constraints and them just being them and talking. I'd love to see that. I like Michael Che. I love like, it. Great dude, too. Really, really great him. dude. I never yeah. met him, but I like I just think he makes me laugh. Um, you have to leave? Yeah, I gotta leave. We got the show over at the at the store. Why? <laughs> oh, I'm hammered. Yeah, I I didn't know if you're stoned. Hammered. All right. What? You never did Doug and Dave's monthly nut. I don't know what that means. What?
you you ask them like what they need to survive every time. Oh yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me piss. Now I have to piss. Don't yeah, leave. Don't you leave. Go all, piss. Right, all right. Uh, yeah, boy, and don't think leave. about your answer when you did the fucking twelve shots. Oh. oh, fuck. oh. You you did that twelve shots thing, and I listened to it. And at the end, you said, "Yeah, I have a one thirty meeting," and you, yeah, no yeah. one has a meeting at one thirty a.m. So you did twelve shots for <laughs> breakfast, and then went to a meeting. Yeah, yeah can I steal another cigarette? Yeah, please? oh yeah, help yourself. I get another pack with me. I don't, I don't come out unprotected, honey. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I attribute it to your girth because I couldn't do 12 shots in anything other than tweet bad things. Nah, dude, you'd do great. Let's let's find out right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I assume since that was how many shots has he done before he even showed up here? What was he doing all day? If I had to guess. I don't think other shots. I, I mean, I said this about Rogan, but I, I bet Burke Kreischer doesn't spend a lot of free time on the couch. I bet he's doesn't do crossword puzzles alone in a fucking double tree, waiting for State Farm to find someone to find. There's no, But if there, he found out he did, that there's would no be construction nice. going on there. Nothing's <laughs> happened. They found asbestos, so they had to fucking like rip out half the fucking walls all the ceilings, and uh, then it just sits there. There's like a haunted house. Hey. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> it's exactly like I pictured it. Do you remember when you could shoot I, naked people? What? Never mind. Sure. When you used to be able to show yeah, your dick. Oh, yeah. All the time. I have fucking pictures. I have Polaroid pictures yeah. from Coots with me and the Jaeger girls, but I pulled my cock and balls. <laughs> yeah. You know, Doug did uh, 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 bl bl blind girls. On... Girls he, got wild. Girls got wild. Oh. Blind just, girls got he wild. did blind girls. Blind girls got wild. <laughs> you know, Doug used to do blind girls. Do you remember that, Doug? How much do you remember yeah. that? Uh, I think like uh, thirty five thousand dollars. No. Yeah. Was the private jet real, or did you guys just walk yeah, on it? Yeah. No, it was real. And really? Then I get fucking ha hammered, and then we have to land at another event in San Antonio. Really? From fucking Ventura, whatever, in Van Nuys, wherever that private jet runway is. Yeah, we fucking get this kid and. Yeah, we're gonna let this other this guy go. Why? Oh, yeah, it was for the Man Show. It was kind of. Uh, but I. Did you meet Joe Francis? Oh, the biggest piece of shit I've Doc? ever met. I've heard he's a really any, good dude. No, uh, like on <laughs> Turns every out he was level, a really good dude. like even <laughs> pornography kidding. people I've met, the and uh, porno people that fucking yeah. like the grossest Ron Jeremy. Uh, also this guy's out, way really worse than out. Ron Jeremy. <laughs> oh. This guy is definitely worse than the worst person I've met. In I don't know. Ron industry. Jeremy's like in that Hannibal Lecter fucking like <laughs> Good guy, man. <laughs> Who ever saw that coming? You're right, yawning right, on, and you on. have to be in I don't Phoenix. Want, I don't want Dave to leave before we end it up. All right. I'm sorry. I feel like am I the cause no, of no, this no, like no, ending? No. What time do you have to be at the store? Well, it's supposed to be eight. And it's 7.45 now. Never, so shows never start on time. That's a good point. Okay. And when are you going up? That I literally just texted to try to find that out to buy more time. Is it just is it just uh, Legion of Skanks? <laughs> I don't know. That's what Jay set the whole thing up. So I don't know who's going oh, what on. What a great fucking organizer. Yeah, that's what I'm relying on that guy. All right. How do we go viral within the next five minutes? What can we do? I always think, I always think, can I get, could I get a, uh, so the only thing I've ever gone viral for is the, I give a drinking speech about why I'll never quit drinking. And I would love to get one from Doug. Ooh. Like why you drink, what you love about drinking. Oh, hang on. You're fucking with me because you know my new thing. It's called Drinkio. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the What's the question? <laughs> Were you this person your whole life? No, but um, generally every time I get high and take an edible, I'm just as goofy as if I'm 16, and I don't want to lose that. I, I don't, don't want to be I, good at getting high. I'm yeah. good at drinking. 
I can drink and just fucking. Yeah. Yeah. It's no different than me. Do you ever, I feel, like, do you ever feel like the drinks are like drinking this. you? Do you ever get on a plane where you go, <laughs> are you, go, you high? Are you doing that? a parody of Dr. Drew? No, I don't know. I don't She's, even know. I just I'm feel pretty like, fucking hammered. I feel like this drink is holding me right in today. Oh, that's, see, we were just discussing yeah. that. You, where, where did you come from? I, I, had, I did a podcast with uh, Mike <laughs> Gibbons and Greg Fitzsimmons. Separately or are they? No, no, no. I did. I did a something's now. burning with them. Oh, I'd yeah. love to do a something's burning with you when you get. Yeah, well, chance. fucking Greg Fitzsimmons is in my movie. He's the one who stole the I show. Know, I know. He. That's yep. why I knew about that movie. And my fucking. They hadn't. I got there a week early, thinking maybe uh, I should. And and it, it was in fucking disarray, and they hadn't cast the lady in it, who's playing my ex girlfriend. That I'm going to see closure with. Yeah. Uh, and from like uh, 22 years ago or whatever. And I, I go, you haven't cast her. It's a week out. I go, well, my ex-girlfriend from 20 years ago is an actress. Christine Hodge. No. The girl from Head of the Class. No. Came out One of my played- favorite lines ever. One of my favorite lines ever. One of my favorite lines ever, 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 ever. I can't tell you who her boyfriend is, but I can tell you what he does. I can tell you what he does for a living. No, the guy she cheated on me with. You I ever go, heard this line? Yeah. I don't think so. He goes, well, is legally, that- I can't. I dated this girl, Christine Hodge. She <laughs> cheated on me, and I can't. Legally, I can't tell you his name, but I can tell you what he does. He's a prince of Monaco. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I That's why I love my life. Is that my I was my that, children that was my will life. never get that in their lives. They'll never <laughs> get that. They'll never get the sparkle of comedy <laughs> where it lands on you and it fires you up and you go, This is what I do. That's all I do. That's all I do. That's all I do is just giggle with my friends. Is I have friends where I can call them up and go, What are you doing? Drinking uh grapefruit and vodka trying to write knock knock jokes <laughs> do you remember you haven't can called I t- can recently I tell you, can i tell you a story can i tell you a story no I'm, I'm so sorry i'm overwhelming this so one of my favorite memories in my life meaning when i die i want to remember this doug and i do a podcast about old house and uh we do like a four-hour po- three-hour podcast we stop to go get cigarettes and get drinks. We come back and Leanne goes, hey, I'm making dinner. Does Doug want to stay for dinner? And my girls are like, stay for dinner. My girls are like 10 and 12, maybe, maybe eight and 10. So Doug's like, yeah, I'll stay for dinner. So he says to dinner and we have drinks. And we have dinner outside. Yeah, it was the first- uh, uh, the- Jan and uh, uh, they were the age of the, Younger to Brady Bunch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So D- the first thing Doug says is, do you guys believe in Santa Claus? So right now we're all on it, right? Like dinner's already started off on it. <laughs> Talk about to tell your kids Santa doesn't exist. Well, you know, oh, that's what, right. You know, we, we were busting his balls off the air before about this. Yeah, because my <laughs> daughters believe in Santa Claus way too late. And like Georgia was 16. And so- um, That is late. It's very late. So, but Doug at one point, offered to come and tell my daughters there's no such thing as Santa Claus. <laughs> he goes, I would like to be the one to break the news to them. I want to see it in their eyes. There's so much. There's going to be a name for that job. Someone who's like yeah. a midwife of, of bad news. Like the Jerry. I would be this, like if I could, I should just come up with that. Like it's always been a thing and I'm the best. The George Clooney up in the air guy who just, just tells them there's no Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> Like that was my favorite. That pilot that never went anywhere oh. that we filmed was my uh, bad news from a celebrity. Was my favorite sketch in it. Where like, all right, oh. and but you're really doing it. Okay, you're gonna get oh. dumped. <laughs> but 
You're going to find out the news from Carmen Electra. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> She's yeah, like, not a bad no, idea. That's not a bad seriously, idea. seriously, she doesn't want you to contact her anymore. She's taking really? her stuff out of the apartment. Like, serious bad yeah, news. Yeah. Alec Baldwin tells you you're fired. <laughs> and it, but no, really, holy shit, you're the guy. And you're like, yeah, but you're going to clean out your desk. Oh. But nice to meet you. I legit wanted Doug to tell my daughters there was no Santa Claus. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. Perfect at it. So we sit down for dinner, and Doug goes, and and we're having a good oh, time. Oh no! First of all, you freak out. I go, don't you dare tell my kids oh, there's no Santa. I, I lost my shit. It's the reason I have a problem with my daughter getting you know, to two. So uh, Isla says at dinner, "Can we play mustard hands?" And Doug goes, "What's mustard hands?" And Isla goes, "It's a game we play." It's funny because mom doesn't like it. Doug goes, "What is it?" She goes, "Well, we take mustard and we put it under the table." We either squirt our I immediately or, get a visible erection. Yeah. <laughs> Misreading the hole under the table yeah, with yeah. the mustard with the child. <laughs> he goes, you either squirt the mustard in your hands or you don't squirt it in your hands. And we pass it around. And then at the end, we guess what type of person at this table put mustard in their hands. And then they guess. And we all show, do you have mustard in your hands? So Doug's like, doesn't really get it. And he's like, okay, yeah, well, well let's play. play. Ida goes, trust me, it's really fun. So she takes the mustard under the table. She does like a, a thing. She goes, all right, next, hands it to Doug. Doug then does it. It goes around the table, Georgia, Leanne, me, and back to Isla. Gets to Isla, and Isla goes, hold on. Can I change mine? And Doug looks at her. No, you're talking about an eight-year-old? And Doug stand up and he goes, you clearly didn't put mustard in your hands. <laughs> she goes, you don't know that. And he goes, no, I definitely know that. Because <laughs> you can't put it back in the bottle. And she goes, I may, maybe I can. And he goes, no, you, you definitely can't. She goes, I, maybe I can. And he goes, you know what? Keep going. I know how this game's played. I got to get some mustard in your hands. You can definitely change yours. See, here go, squirt. She puts mustard in her hands and Doug goes, Isla has mustard in her hands. It's like two children playing a game. He goes, Isla has mustard in her hands. And then she goes, how did you know? And he goes, how did I know? You definitely fucking it. this. So it goes around the table. Everybody goes, Isla, Isla goes, I have mustard in my hands. So then he goes, Doug. Doug definitely has mustard in his hands. He goes, I have mustard in my hands. Goes to Georgia. Georgia definitely has mustard in his hands. Goes to Leanne. Everyone goes, there's no way. It has mustard in her hands. I didn't do it. It made me, it's one of my favorite fucking memories ever in the world is watching this, watching Doug and Isla fucking barter about mustard. Oh, to this day, to the day I die. It was my favorite, one of my favorite memories about a kid and Doug. Now I she's left. 18 and I'm dating her. No, she's fucking Spot 16. Her first she plays, she's into jujitsu. Oh, right. Yeah, Isla, Georgia's 18. Georgia's got the tattoo. I'm pretty hammered. We should wrap this up. <laughs> yeah. You guys good? Yeah, I, I'm high and I need to go hey, get what something you, to what eat. You, what do you think about the new studio? Good hang, right? <laughs> That's what I said. It's under construction, unlike my house. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fucking great. We talked about the burning down of your house. The what? Never mind. <laughs> burning down the what? Um, fucking wasted. <laughs> you going to the store? Are you going to do a set right now? Yeah. Fucking Shane Gillis texted me as I'm leaving to come out here. He goes, uh, "Hey, uh, um, uh, what? Do you, where are you? Uh, I'm in Phoenix. I want to come down to Bisbee for a drink. I got two days to kill." And I go, "I'm, I'm at the airport flying to L.A. Uh, and there's are no you in house this weekend, there, huh? Yeah." You're no, I'm going to fucking Australia. I'm doing Super Bowl. If you want to come to my Super Bowl party this year, since I don't have a fucking house, State Farm, uh, I'm, I, I'm flying to Australia. So I purposely got an eight hour layover from Tucson to LAX uh, or, or at LAX so I can watch the entire Super Bowl so in LAX? the Delta Sky no. Club. No. So, yeah. Snacks. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh. That's what I love about your life. And I'm flying well bingo 
just the LAX that day and then flying right back to Tucson at 7.30 at night. Is Bingo not going she, to Australia with you? No, no, but she's she's going to fly up for the Super Bowl party. It's going to be a, a me and Bingo and party. The fucking Delta Skyline. <laughs> yeah. That's the I most have, Doug Stanhope I have a, thing ever. I have a most, Delta vintage jacket with a Delta patch that looks like I work at Delta. There's, so, there's a list of Doug Stanhope things. Number one is flying around the world to get miles at the end of the year. That's oh, I, my I, favorite I, I, thing. I, I, I just did it even last what did summer. Call, what did you call I don't even need hopping? the miles. Uh, airport pub crawl. So you just, all right, now I'm going to drink. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on real quick. I'm, I'm going to let you leave in a second. Uh, just so this can go viral, tell me what an airport pub crawl is and in a minute. Airport pub crawl, I would book, okay, here I am at the Tucson airport. I, I fly to Atlanta. This is all on one ticket. All right, I'm going to be here for three hours. Here we are at the Sky Club, and we're going to hit this bar. That's uh, And then uh, now I'm in Johannesburg. We're at the, there's a smoking bar in Johannesburg, and we're going to drink here and then fly directly. Never leave an airport to Amsterdam back to Detroit, Salt Lake, Vegas, and back to Tucson was the longest one. All to get your miles. That was to get my miles. And then I've done it other times. Just fucking, I have all the miles in the world. fucking brilliant. I'm, he would hit me up and he'd go, uh, yo, I'm doing an airport pub call to Hawaii. Your Hawaii was your spot. Well, yeah, Hawaii was, yeah. Was, uh, uh, Tucson, Seattle, to uh not korea but J uh, japan uh to singapore and then hawaii lax back is it do you, does this make sense to you like this this is what he would do all the time <laughs> this is not not all the time calls, i would do like one a year one a year but at towards the end of the year and they at were like first. super sexy to me because <laughs> i was like i was like yeah why 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 wouldn't you do an airport pub crawl and just fly around the world, get your miles. If we could get comedy clubs inside a security side of airports, I know it can't work. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. It yeah, can. It's, a, it's something I'll think about all the way to the closest fast food place because I'm such a cliched fucking high guy that I definitely am going to go eat fast food right now. And it's probably going to be Taco Bell. I am, and that's uh, a cliche. This, this, this turned out so well. It did, right? I love this. I, I, I still have to do a podcast with you. One hundred percent. I don't. There's a lot of stuff you, I don't know that you know that dude, I don't know. Like Yemen, I don't know what the fuck that is, dude. Any fucking time you want to do it, let me know. All right, Yemen. Uh, don't. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. D what, Dave, what, Dave, Dave. Yeah, I get deep. You mean the country? Shit. Yeah. Dave knows about stuff that like I've never heard of. And I go, I, Yemen. Yeah, look, real quick, tell them about Yemen. <laughs> no, real quick, tell them no, about Yemen. Tell them about Yemen. Tell them about Yemen. I don't know. There's been a Yemen. pretty brutal war going on there for the last eight years. All right, just for, to be for the crazy. Better. And no in one the knows last about it. Three days. I in the because I do nothing now but crossword puzzles in a hotel I, I live in. You're gonna say CrossFit. I, no, I actually <laughs> read the entire history of Liberia randomly. Liberia. Hold on. I said I brought this up last night. Liberia is where they sent all the slaves to start their own company, right? Yeah. Their own country. And uh, then they the first thing they did, slavery. They took the local uh, slaves. That's yeah. right. It's Dude, nothing. I'm smart as fuck. The you really are. Is, There's you nothing say, going on in that country Yemen. good except at the airport, Doug is drinking a lot. If you, if you catch Dude, the airport, we hang. should find the Liberia. We should do, we should do a party in Liberia. Doug, no, we're just here in LA. No, maybe no, you shouldn't. It's whatever you want to do, you can do it in Liberia. We're just like down the block. You're the I take a dare guy. I don't take any fucking dares. I'll take a dare. You, you jump off a shit. <laughs> Did you fly you, to uh, Russia? No, no, I wouldn't. Oh, I already missed up that one. <laughs> All right. See you guys oh, in May. Why are you already casting already, part already, two? Already, I'm doing a. There's nothing. I watched your trailer. It's brilliant. Oh, thank you. Uh, but all I could think, and I think this, uh, every Russian accent in a film sounds fake, even though that's probably their accent sounds like a fake accent. Yeah, I know what yeah. you mean. Yeah, it's like black accents when they're done by 
uh, British dudes. Does that bother you? No, I'm all for it. Uh, well, okay. That kind of teeters on the Green Day sounding British, you know, punk rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. no. I, I had a but problem with I, the American. guy that played Martin Luther King was is British. But does he sound British in the movie? Well, no, but I don't know. I got, it bothered me a little bit that he was like doing a black accent. And he's like, all right, mate, how's that sound? Full score. <laughs> like, you know, four scores. That's, uh, right. That's not what Martin Luther King said at all. <laughs> all right, let's end this podcast. <laughs> Doug just left. Doug just left. I love you guys. I love you guys. I love hey, you, bro. Thank you so much for having us here, Dave, man. Dave, I have to do a solo podcast with you. Dude, let's You're, do it. Yeah, yeah, please. Is Bert's handler here? He's having one of his moments. I love you, Doug. I love you, Doug. I love you, Doug. I love you, Doug. <laughs> <laughs>